What's up? This is MC Lars. You are listening to Journey Into Comics. You! And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey Into Comics, a podcast about comic books, video games, movies, television, and everything nerd with your hosts, Nate Phillips and Brandon Stone. See some serious shit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. <laughs> <laughs> you Nailed it. Me up, Full animation. Keep it, keep it. <laughs> Ship it, sell okay. it, it's ready. Okay, for real though. <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Journey. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Don't look him in the eyes. Close I, your eyes. I have my eyes closed. No eye contact, guys. <laughs> I started. Okay, I'm off. Nate clearly needs to just get his shit together. <laughs> He's got the giggles. It happens, yeah. man. Yeah. That's how it is when you're making love. <laughs> <laughs> no eye contact whatsoever, please. Sometimes. <laughs> no, 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 stop. Just don't. No, don't look. Right. At me. Let's not get into okay. it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Journey into Comics. I got through it that time, you motherfuckers. This is your host, Nate. Joining me, as always, my co-host, Brando. How's it going? It's going mighty fine, my friend. This is round number two of trying this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know what? Like, what you're, you said earlier, you are two-take Nate. Sometimes that was like seven-take Nate, because I couldn't stop giggling. <laughs> that, is, that, that is true, but you totally nailed the intro on this one. Cool. Well, uh, today we're doing something special. We are live from Dr. Dongo's special studio. Blaine, welcome to the show. Uh, Hey there, how's it going? Good. Today, we've brought along some friends. Yes, yes we have. I'm going to let you reintroduce them. Yeah. Okay, so today we have video game metal master Colby Terry. How you doing over there? Help. (laughs) And, don't, don't, just ignore that. It'll be okay. (laughs) And today we also have Nick Maxson, Overlord of Doom. That was Perfect. a very intriguing noise. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So uh, today we're doing something special. We're doing another metal cast, mm-hmm. metal cast four. Ironically, when we did metal cast one and two, we did metal cast one in March and metal cast two right at the end of June. Yeah. So it's almost around the same time. Yeah, kind of. Calendary. When was three? That was like in April. No, well, April or May. Uh, that was at the end of March when yeah, we was, came in to oh, do okay, the audio okay. test for you know for LaffyCon. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's we okay. saw you that day and learned about the the truth of Dongo. <laughs> the truth yeah, of his Dongo. real identity. <laughs> yes, I blew his cover. Dongo yeah. revealed. It's it's been leaked. Obviously, <laughs> it's been leaked. <laughs> so, Brando, where do we want to start today, man? Buddy, uh, today you and me are going to kind of take a little bit of a step back, and we're just going to let uh, some of these other guys talk. We all have some sort of topic of some sorts. We don't? I didn't know to have a topic. Well, I mean... I know this is the fourth one, but I don't ever come prepared. (laughs) Well, some of us have topics. Uh, In in reality, I don't have one either, but we can really just shoot and uh, kind of go off the cuff as far as what these guys really want to talk about. These guys have their own projects and their own uh, sort of things that they kind of do in in the world of metal, and we definitely want to talk to them and get to know about that. Yeah. Of course, I mean, uh, uh, and with true metal cast fashion, we can't we can't let them leave without them telling us at least a little bit of their journey oh, into metal. Exactly, oh, man. exactly. Moon dude. Wow, <laughs> man, I don't know where to start. <clears throat> Let's see, Nick. I know you more. All I've, right. We've been Facebook friends for a little bit. I kind of get who you are, right? I know very little about you, Colby. Hey. So I think we're gonna start with you. Oh boy. So I have to sit here and talk about myself now. What? I, well, listen. You don't have to like. What do you want to Talk hear from me? Yourself. I need to know, <laughs> as a person, like what band turned you on to metal. Then oh I, it happens to everybody that at some point another band that isn't where you started sparks your interest and takes you to a sure, different level. Sure. So I just want to kind of get an understanding of who, what that is for you. Okay, uh, a long, long time ago. Um, oh boy, I don't know. First metal band. Oh geez, I don't even really know. Well, probably I'd say even like like Lincoln Park would be a good like entry band into the sort of genre cuz with the with the new metal kind of stuff. But I don't know. Growing up, I always just kind of listened to whatever my mom was listening to. Um so there's like a lot of classic rock in there. Um but like it wasn't until I was about 
I don't know, probably like 13 or 14 till I started to like venture off into my own musical interests, which were like mostly kind of like alt rock and sort of like pop punk and that kind of stuff. So, but I, I tended to like gravitate towards like the heavier sound. So I feel like Rise Against is cool. probably a good uh, way into that. Um, but I think what really got me into the quote metal genre was probably more of like the progressive kind of stuff. Um, so like Dream Theater resonated with me a lot um my t-shirt protest the hero um loved them when i was introduced to them uh you know a uh, classic metallica even um that, that kind of stuff i guess and especially now um i feel like most of metal that i listen to is 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 progressive it's like uh animals as leaders intervals that kind of stuff a lot of different time signatures yeah cool <laughs> intricate stuff going yeah on just top like of a lot yeah. of like interesting and like delicate kind of music i guess well put well put uh now i do believe you are a guitar player yes as well right? yes now when did that start for you that uh compared to a lot of people i know i started kind of late i didn't start playing guitar until i was probably about 15 or 16 uh would have been like i think my sophomore year of high school uh and i kind of well actually played a little bit before in i think eighth grade where i was put into lessons and i took lessons for like two months so i don't know if that really counts but it wasn't until i started teaching myself how to play when i was about 15 or 16 until i like really got in um and then yeah i just pretty much taught myself how to play just like you know foo fighters songs stuff like that um and just kind of got better um and then eventually um good friend of mine Corey Guilford who is also uh in in a band with Nick that I was once a part of uh invited me to Weedby which was that band and uh, he's like he's like hey I'm in this metal band I know you play guitar do you want to play guitar and I was like I mean okay but like I don't like super shred metal things (laughs) or anything but he's like it's fine just learn the songs it'll be good and so I learned the songs he sent me like I think it was like the SoundCloud at the time or, or something like that. And a couple tabs. So I was like, okay, I learned the song. Got it. Whatever. Showed up to my quote audition. And I think, I don't think you were even there. I, I think, don't think I was either. I think it was just Corey and Cody. And I met Cody and then auditioned. And Cody was blown away because I could just play the songs having not even met him. And that got me in. And then we played in Weed B for three years ish yeah yeah and then uh the golden years yeah (laughs) yeah put out an album and an ep it was sick weed b has actually been featured on this podcast once yes yes i believe uh the very was it the very first podcast yeah i played uh rum gun salute the the earliest the hit classic the (laughs) earliest uh (laughs) the earliest rendition or the earliest recording of that Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Um, I believe you brought that, and you brought something else. I think I brought. I, I think I brought my own music. I think that that's what, was yeah. on my mind. And yeah. then the second one was with Only Human and Axios, yeah. right? Yeah, you brought Axios. I brought uh, Only yes. Only Human Axios Diamond Heart. Awesome. Yeah, I've known Danny for quite a while. So and then we didn't play anything. On yeah, 30. we didn't. We haven't played anything for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and really, that uh, that kind of boils down to just. Uh, I could play it on here, but today I cannot because my mm-hmm. I, every single hole is plugged up on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping her busy. It's, it, she is Stuffed. being used. So you're talking about being in Weed B as if it's past tense. Yes. Uh, so about, what was it, probably two years ago now, I, uh, I left the band. Not any sort of like bad blood or anything, um, but uh, I moved to Seattle. Uh, so yes, I'm visiting from Seattle. Um, Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, you don't live here anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, and I leave tomorrow. So <laughs> that, you're like the furthest traveled guest we've ever had on, probably. Woohoo! Another first, dude. I, yeah, that's wild. I make the miles. That's cool. <laughs> Colby um, came here just to be on this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Skype. <laughs> yeah. Don't um, need you. But yeah, so I moved to Seattle, and I've been living there for for two years now. Came back in town to play. Uh, this past weekend at Field Day with oh. my now current project, which is uh, just video game metal arrangements. So yeah, which by the way, I really really dig the uh, the uh, 
Theater. Mega Man X. Oh yeah, yeah. Regal. Yeah, thanks, that man. That was badass. Yeah, I the video uh, just came out. Was it Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, so the week before I flew back to play the show here i was visiting a friend of mine in la and that's where we shot it and he's an actual like cinematographer so the production quality on that video is really good and now at this point i'm just like well shit now any <laughs> any video <laughs> i made by myself is going to be complete garbage compared to this so i guess i'm gonna have to fly to la every weekend now but, i mean it was really cool though i would like i really liked how it was all done and that is one of my favorite tracks from from that game yeah so. yeah storm eagle like among the VGM community, Storm Eagle's done a lot, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It's like it's it's just a fun track and it's fun to play. So I was like, you know, well, so yeah, is, sure, I'll do it. Well, so is Doctor Wily from Mega Man Two. That exactly, like, yeah. Done to death, that's you know? that's a huge one. So it's like, yeah, it's almost like some of these tracks are like you know, um, it, like when you do them, they're, they're they're almost like tests of strength or like what you know, yeah, you know, like test your might from Mortal Kombat. It's like. Show your worth. Can you do this song? Can you do it well? Yeah. All right. Now, that's awesome. You proved right. yourself. Now, now. Especially with, like, there's, like, a lot of games out there. Um, and I've heard, I haven't done a song from Pokemon, but I've heard Pokemon is, like, really mm-hmm. difficult to do. It's like, none of this stuff was ever intended for a guitar. Like, good luck. You, um, <laughs> my friend, my, my old friend Scott, uh, he used to be my roommate. He would just, he would play around with his guitar and, like, he'd just chug along to some of the shit. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like, Elite Four themes, Lance's theme. Yeah. Uh, he's just like, yeah, it was so cool. Have you ever it's, heard of? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Have you ever heard of Daniel Tidwell? Daniel Tidwell. No, I don't think so. Uh, look up some of his stuff. He's done some Pokemon things. Okay. Uh, but he he's put out three albums. Versus, they're all called Versus Video Games One, Two, and Three. Oh, okay. And uh, really, he started on YouTube by covering the FF7 battle theme. Oh yeah. Like just a regular battle theme. He did yeah. that with, and then it just sparked his. It, his whole thing he always had three albums he's done versus uh, also like movies or whatever too oh, okay yeah movie stuff but yeah like he you know he programs his own drums and does all that yep, kind of yep. stuff too and then and of course that you know makes me think of smooth mcgroove as well yeah i yeah. yeah i've met him i know him he is absolutely insanely talented yeah with this with the stuff that he that he pulls off yeah so. there's uh there's a big uh, uh con in in dc called magfest and a mm-hmm. lot of those guys kind of go there and yeah. I, i've been going there for the past like five years so i've yeah i've met some of the groove there's a lot of power glove was another yeah power, power gloves player. there mm-hmm. um and there's like a lot of the like big youtuber vgm guys like there's family jewels 7x mm-hmm. and toxic yeah toxic x eternity and family jewels is badass too yeah I yeah stuff. yeah and just like those guys they all go there hang out and it's just it's a, it's a fun time <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome so is, is there anything else coming down the pipe from you as far as like releases? yeah um i'm hoping to have a full album out by the end of the year i have one ep and then i have i have three tracks done for this new uh this new quote album okay what's on the ep uh let's see uh final rush from sonic adventure 2 awesome. stone tower temple from majora's mask uh the man with the machine gun from final fantasy yes. 8 force your way from final fantasy 8 uh, Bowser's Road from Mario 64 and then Mute City from F-Zero. That's cool, man. That's really cool. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to ask the hard question. Okay. How's licensing work for all that? That's a uh, fuck ton of songs to get yeah, licensed. Yeah, it's... Fortunately, there's like really good services that just kind of do it for you. It's like CD Baby stuff. Yeah. Um, the one I'm currently using is called Sound Drop, which was louder. Okay. Um, so it's the same thing, but there's also like DistroKid and yeah. like I've used DistroKid and I think I have the Weedby stuff through DistroKid. Um, but yeah, I just plug it into SoundDrop. I'm like, this is the composer. This is the song I'm covering. And okay. And then they do it and you pay like a fee or something. I think mm-hmm. it's like 10 bucks or something. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's not as hard as you might think, but I've heard um, that like there are specific songs that are not licensable for whatever reason i like i've been hearing uh from some of the guys that uh hyrule castle from the new breath of the wild is not licensable i don't know why i think it has something to do with that song taking elements from other of their older songs Mm -hmm. so i think like i know medleys is hard to do because if you're trying to cover multiple songs in one song it's like really difficult to license that so i think uh didn't power glove do it a Zelda medley, yeah, strength, yeah. Like, so like power, I, wisdom, and I courage. imagine like you can do it. I I don't know how though. I haven't done right. a medley yet. So right, all right. 
That's awesome, man. Oh, like, I definitely want to hear more. Uh, like, like, if you can update us about like the album and everything like that, we'll definitely talk about that. Yeah, sure. I'm a video game collector, so okay. That's, like, literally in the intro of this show, like the next thing you say is video games. What's up? Oh, the intro of the show. <laughs> yeah. what, about, what about the intro? How you doing, man? Uh, what's <laughs> up? <laughs> I was lost. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> All right, this is a podcast about comic books, video games, movies, television. Oh, and second. Everything I there. see what you're saying. It's second. It's second. I mean, yeah. well, because like he he collected comic books. He goes, I'm starting a podcast. He goes, you should come on. I'm like, I collect video games. He's yeah, like, awesome. I'm like a low key connect like collector, but I don't have like a super crazy collection. But I have like. Like Earthbound's probably my rarest game, probably. Right and I have like a couple like import titles of like the Japanese version we'll see, of like Final Fantasy X. If you ever wanted to get into it, Seattle's the place to be. Mm-hmm. Seattle is the place to be. Uh, be home of Nintendo, home of Microsoft. Yeah, um, that's yeah. where. I mean, that's where I'm that, down the street from both of them. Yeah, that's where like <laughs> that super rare orange Halo Xbox was found at, at a garage sale. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's well, that's where Metal perfect. Jesus lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seattle. Who is Metal Jesus? Metal Jesus Rocks is a, a video game collector, and he's also in a band. And he lives out in Seattle, and he just does kind of video game collection based videos on his, his YouTube channel. His and collections insane. He used to work nice. for he used to work for Sierra. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. They made like games in the nineties, like 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 your adventures games, your uh, King's Quest and stuff yeah. like that. He used to work for them, and he has like this really long hair, and so that they always just kind of like he always used to like play like metal music at like his at his, like at, like his workstation. He worked for support. He used to play like a bunch of metal stuff, and uh, they always called him Metal Jesus because he had the long hair. So it, it just, it's a nickname that stuck. And when he named cool. his YouTube Metal Jesus Rocks, and so that's it, that's nice. that it's is stuck. Favorite, <laughs> yeah, that's his tagline. You know, yeah. he, he he's Metal Jesus. So I also in the intro of this episode when we were talking with with Colby here, your journey parallels mine a little bit. I'm self-taught guitar player okay. first didn't start till I was 15 or 16 ended up getting in a band with this guy yeah. now you parallel him because he also at one point left our band on good terms to move okay. and to do other things in his life so uh, that's an interesting parallel I saw the Zelda tattoo <laughs> yeah so I just I just started Breath of the Wild probably four days ago so good obsessed yeah that's all I've been doing like Majora's Mask is still probably my favorite Zelda just in terms of the atmosphere, but Breath of the Wild is 100% hands down the best one in terms of gameplay. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun, too. Just roaming. Yeah. We just went into a Game Addicts tangent. A little bit, but that's okay, because this is... This, what it's about, this, right? Well, this, com- well, this uh, Journey to Comics, uh, it, it's all-encompassing. It's a journey. It is quite the journey, <laughs> and also very tangential. But is, <laughs> <laughs> he just, you know, uh, he came down today, and I had an eye appointment, right? So we, so we drove down to Carmel. And then we tangented our own conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the podcast and, and you know uh, and whatnot with 150 coming up. We were talking about oh this episode this this episode that we had this what was the last episode you know and then we just from like we talked about journey to wrestling just for a second and that tangented into a whole different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and and then we got like probably around ten miles down the road he goes you. You just realize that we just tangented in real conversation. <laughs> yeah, this is not a, like a podcast thing where you're like, shit, I have to get that thought out. That was just like real life. Just like, oh, let's go here. <laughs> okay, groovy. That's meta, dude. <laughs> it, is, it is very meta. So let's continue on here. Sure. Nick, I want to know your journey into metal. Like, where does it start for you? You have mostly single-handedly like revitalized the music scene in Lafayette. It definitely the metal ago. scene the metal perhaps scene. yeah the metal you know music scene. it's really cool to finally have nick on here i've i've mentioned him so every every time i'm on at he, some point i mention him he's cameoed oh he yeah cameoed yeah at, uh, oh yes that's at, right uh, uh, that's right yeah. that's right we tried that ghost pepper beer yeah Ooh. Ooh. it was good delish that's an, that's an ass kicker <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh let's yeah. see so i would say uh, my journey began with more of the hard rock. Okay. Uh, I, I'd say my first favorite band was probably Breaking Benjamin, mm-hmm. uh, which got me into Disturbed. Um, and then I moved into like a Treyu. Yeah. Treyu. Coheed and Cambria. Fuck yeah. Um, and then I'd say the next the next big milestone for me was Buckethead. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a guitar player at all, but uh, played Guitar Hero, which absolutely 
uh, shove me in the direction of, of better music, yeah. I think. Because I was, I was totally driven by the by the vocals for the most part with everything I listened to until Guitar Hero. So then I started listening to the guitars because I loved the crazy guitar stuff. And Buckethead was on there, so I totally fell in love with that, which got me into more just totally weird stuff. I think from there I got into Dream Theater. Um, eventually got into Between the Buried and Me, which I would then say was the band that, that totally changed it for me and... Uh, that got me into the like the progressive metal, the Opeth, the um, Hawken and Leprous and Emperor and and the journey just never ends, you know. It goes from you, now I'm into black metal and there's just a uh, never ending. The nice thing about metal too is the like you have this journey, and I'm sure that randomly you go back and listen to the stuff that you started with. Oh, yeah. You pull out the Breaking Benjamin, you know, their first album. Or, it's still great. You know, but... It's different, though. Oh, yeah. You're appreciating it from a different perspective. Uh, yeah, I definitely understand that nostalgia purpose. Now, you might have gotten into, into the music through that channel, but where did you decide, like, I need the area around me to mean something with music? Because that's like, I don't know if you meant to make that, like, your goal, but you keep driving this machine of like, no, music fucking matters. Let it be here. I would say it was between the buried and me. When I started listening to them, they were the ones that made me think I want to... Because I've always been a writer. I, I like to write and tell stories. So after listening to... It was Colors by Between the Buried and Me. Oh, yeah. That got me into thinking I can write prose stories and then make music out of it as opposed to the rhyming bullshit you hear on the radio where it's all it sounds very just formulaic so um so then i start. i got into a band that was it was we'd be we'd be was my first band um and we were not progressive metal <laughs> At all, yeah, you guys are a very different band from where you guys started. We were, we were not. We were, <laughs> we had. They were a little punky. They were. I believe the lyric was thrashy. "pop that pussy." <laughs> <laughs> I did not write that lyric. That was that. That was not me. That was Gambrel, <laughs> which is like a curse word in Weedby. If you say the word Gambrel, no offense, man. If you're listening, I love, I love you, no Brandon. Offense. Total offense. But. So then, uh, then we played a bunch of shows around town at like house shows. Uh, the Fortress is a place over in West Lafayette, um, and that was just that was just dudes doing shows out of their houses. And the first couple of shows we played were really bad. Like they were like, because we were all very young guys and we'd never been in bands before, so it was just guys having fun. But the guys we were friends with, they kept letting us come around. And then when they eventually stopped doing shows, we were like, we should pick up the mantle, you know, because otherwise there's nowhere else to do shows. Um, Because no place in town does metal at all. There's no one that was interested in it. So we had a house that could do it, and then we did. Um, After a while, it just seemed like, you know, it was was kind of a giving back thing where it was all these people supported me when, you know, I... I would not have booked me. That's what I. That's what I always tell people. Like, if I booked Weedby's first show, I would never have booked him again because we were so bad. So, it made me want to get back to the community as much as possible. And five years later, we're still, we're still going at it and expanding and expanding. I mean, that's that's crazy. It's not in a basement solely anymore. You know, after I think it was after six months or so, we tried to do like an outdoorsy kind of thing at a record store. And then within a year, we found a bar in town that was interested in letting us book. And then another year later, there was a old renovated theater downtown that was willing to let us book. And before you know it, I mean, there's probably five places around town that we can book now and people are actually interested in it. And on any given night, we can get 100 people out. And on an awesome night, you can get 300 people out. So... It's been a journey. Aha, I like how you tied it back in there. Uh, 
I've booked a couple shows with you, and they've been a blast. You kind of have unintentionally adopted Walk Among Us into this area. Like, we want this to kind of be home-based in future because it's just a different environment. Like, Chicago. Chicago is a place where you would expect music to be flourishing. But there's so much fucking music and so many fucking bars in the city of Chicago. It's so oversaturated that no one gives a fuck and no one goes to anything. Right. And that's just, and that's like the curse of, of that area. So it's refreshing to come here, have, I mean, we've played two different places and it's been, it's been fucking awesome both times, you know? Yeah. So. It's a, uh, a very inviting community. You know, we try yeah. to make it, we try to make it to where it's not just, uh, your bands come into play and, and then you're going to go home. And that was just another show, which I have played tons of those shows where you drive, you know, three or five hours to play a show and it's completely like non-memorable. Like you, yeah. you won't ever think about it again, but I like to think that when you come to play Lafayette, it's like a, damn, those people, they brought us in. Like they were, they were all about it. We, we do have a tendency to do that. And you know, like uh, w- one thing I've noticed is like, there's always like these few bands, like, okay, we have Eric Cobra. Uh, we have uh, Minds Horizon. I mean, first Minds Horizon's kind of become like an inner circle friend, essentially. I I would mm-hmm. say, and then there's there's a few other bands I, I can't that aren't I can't come up with off the top of my head. But like there's these bands that like you know people talk about even when they haven't been here for months, you know, or that they'll be like, yeah, I really hope this band comes around again. And you know what's really cool is like Walk Among Us has become one of those bands around here. Uh-uh. Don't say I, that I, shit. I shit you not. Just like, being, it, it's cool that that. There are several bands, like you're saying, that are not from here, but can can consider it like home base. Like they know that when they come there, like mm-hmm. tons of people are going to show up. Sometimes yeah. even more so than the the hometown. Yeah, yeah. I was I was at the bar uh, maybe a week or so before your theater show. Yeah, and uh, I had I had a friend like, yeah, dude, that he's not even really part. Of, he's not part of this scene at all. He's not part of the Doom Room scene. He's, okay. he's a friend from high school that happened to be at your Jerry Lee's show. Oh, uh, Ryan? No, um, his name's Adam. Adam okay. Parrish. Oh, weird. He messaged me today on oh. the band page about a show in Lafayette, apparently. Interesting. Yeah. Well, no, he was like, dude, that Walk Among Us band, man, they were fucking badass last time. I'm like, yeah, dude, they're play- they're they're buddies of mine, and they're playing here again next week at the theater. Sure enough, he showed up. And so, but that's, that's just one, that's one case of, um, like, someone never heard of you guys before, and it's, I think it's really cool since he's not part of the scene either, but he's like, yeah, Walk Among Us fan. It's like people around here, they get it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it. and I'll say like from the other side of it, like, you know, I live in Seattle now, but I wanted my first live set with, with this VGM project to be here because even, yeah, I've played shows around Lafayette with Weedby and stuff, but it's like, even if nobody knows who I am from Weedby or whatever, like people are here are going to enjoy it. And yes. it's going to be a lot of fun. And even though like... Everything like went wrong with my set, like just because of stupid. <laughs> you had a rough set, but computer you know, it was bullshit fun. stuff. It was fun. Um, like uh, people still were like, "Yeah, that was awesome, dude." I was like, "Really?" Because that, oh god. <laughs> but thanks. You, you, got, you got upset a few times. I, I I noticed. Yeah, but it'll be better next time, <laughs> yes. and there will be a next time. I'll say that. So. <laughs> There's always another show. Yeah, that's that. I've adopted that as my motto. If we if like we have a show where it's like. Uh, we played Indianapolis. This is a really fun little story. We played Indianapolis in April. We go to this venue, and I had been promoting the shit out of this. We're out of market, so I'm just promoting, 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 and just doing whatever I can. We get there. There's no advertisements that anybody's playing. We find out it's not a bar. It's strictly a venue. So they don't have regulars that they can tell about shows. Literally the bands. And the bands didn't even bring girlfriends, so it was just the bands. <laughs> like, Damn. and here's the weirdest thing: did about they even this have show. girlfriends? Uh, maybe. Uh, were they together inside they did of not the band? Bring them. They did not bring them though. Were were, were they just with each other? They might have been just with each other. But here's <laughs> was, the fucked up thing: is it was the only place we've played that had like the craziest, dopest green room, hmm. fridge, pool table, two huge fucking couches. It was the it was the weirdest thing. Huh. It was, it was like, a cool you, hang, but not a cool show. <laughs> exactly. It was. A, it would have been an awesome place if they if they got their shit together. They would be. I mean, if they had half of what you can do with a place. I mean, if you ever took over Birdies in Indianapolis, you'd uh, you'd own it. Just saying. 
It's definitely in the in the cards to try and have a legitimate place that's not going to be, you know. Your place of living. Right. <laughs> not my place of living and not on someone else's dime. How's so. that for you, too? Uh, you have bands come to your home and play. So you are inviting oh, yeah. tons of fucking strangers into your crib. An unbelievable amount of strangers. <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking terrifying, right? Some nasty people, I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, it's it's not too bad, honestly. Um, we've had some some instances of puking on the couches. We've had people stand on the pool table. We've had people piss themselves on the couch. But no one's grabbing stuff off the shelves. No one's uh, you know tearing stuff off the walls for the most part. Um, and that just that's part of that feeds right back into the actual what I consider the doom room. You know, family. Like if you're if you're fucking around like I, if, if, if i'm not the one that tells you to stop it's going to be dongo that tells you to stop it's going to be one of the 20 other people that are like you don't you don't fuck around here man this is a this is a family this isn't this isn't uh your house and honestly who the fuck acts like that in their own house correct like, why yeah. would you throw cigarette butts on the ground in your own house like damn that's happened so much just stupid bullshit like that, that <laughs> man <laughs> Oh, I know that back in the day, Brando, we had house shows, and it was a little bit different because it was more of a just like playing for people, mm-hmm. getting that exposure or whatever. But uh, friends and friends of friends, it yeah. was never hey, random people just show up. Because well, here's the thing, I remember we played a show uh, New Year's Eve one time, one time, and the way like your basement is like totally uninviting for people, yeah, because how we had to spread out was like. You had like this. We we packed everything in one area, but one person, in order to play in front of people, had to be like way over here, like where you couldn't even see them. <laughs> so like I was over there just hanging out, and this one chick comes up right next to me. It's going yeah, <laughs> and I'm like right on, <laughs> right on. And then she ends up adding me as a friend on Facebook. She goes, "Hi, your show was great, awesome." I'm like, "Awesome, glad is glad you showed up." And she's acting like she knows me. If only you had the thumbs up option back, back then. then. Yeah, <laughs> um, I hate that in thing. Fact, <laughs> in fact, she may have like it may it may have not have been like Facebook. It might have been MySpace back. Oh then. shit! Uh, like you know, like whatever it was, she reached out and she friended me and messaged me, and I, she's acting like she knows me, and I'm like trying to like get around it, like asking her some questions, trying to figure out who the hell she is. Number one, <laughs> and I, then I. I, I, I get clicked with me that night. Oh, that's that crazy chick that was like right up with us. And then um, you're like, oh, yeah, dude, that was this chick. We went to high school with her. I'm like, we did? Yeah, dude, we used to hang out with her. And I and the only thing I said was, when? <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember her before that night. I don't know who the fuck you're Billy. Even. Oh, Billy. <laughs> oh, Billy. <laughs> really? No, <laughs> Bit like B- Billy Kurtz. Kurtz. Yeah, she didn't go to our high school. I worked with her at IGA. She's a psychopath. Her dad, <laughs> her dad was in this band called Greeley Wit, and they oh, were okay, like, okay. they were like the next Leonard Skinner that didn't catch the break. Right, right. I remember Greeley Wit. Like, the, okay, so like, but see, the thing is, is that he's like, you played it off like I knew this chick, and I'm like, I don't know her, but she's acting like I do. And I, I've always been nice. I've always been very, you know, friendly. But we would have that kind of situation, like where you said that sometimes, like it was never anybody we didn't know. I was like, no, we were sometimes where people, friends of friends, would bring people to see us for the first time at a like at a basement show. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, it was it was never the most friendly. We had that whole duck work that kind of went around, and you know, uh, it was just basically hang out and listen to some music, and you know. That's the most poorly laid out basement for shows. Oh, dude, 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 dude it was absolutely terrible. The furnace is in the dead center of the yeah. thing, so it I mean, walks off. It was fine room. for band practice. Sure. I, I wish you guys could have saw the narrow house, the one of the original basement venues around here. You and have a narrow house tattoo. I do. Yeah, that was uh, last podcast. I yeah. Remember. Well, the narrow narrow house was. It was like a big ass basement, but for some reason they chose to put all the the, the stage and everything in the the tiny corner where there was a pillar separating from the rest of the basement and it was just 
it was a very small area for people to get into and it, it ended up people being going around the pillar <laughs> and not being able to see anything and it's just it was weird the funniest basement show anything we did is when we were first starting like we knew two songs and they were covers okay no pa no pa so we had no vocals so we just screamed yeah <laughs> You know, like really, like like really far away. Like, like we had a tape deck, and we went on top of the basement, and like our drummer couldn't even do the drum fills yet. So like like we played for whom the bell tolls, and after every verse, we would like we would scream it, and then we would just all stop playing. <laughs> we would start up for the next. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but I remember these girls came up. Uh, from Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel, Illinois. And they were these girls that we'd all been kind of talking to and kind of courting a little bit. And uh, I just remember that being such a strikeout. Like, I'm talking like worst, like <laughs> when Cubs are bad, they're bad, yes. you know? And it's just like, like literally players fumbling over their own feet. I'm talking about major <laughs> league shit here from like, you know, that, the like, start of the movie. Yeah, dude, just them completely <laughs> fumbling over everything. That that is how bad that went. Like we played our two songs, we tried talking to these girls. My girl didn't even come. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even show up. Okay. Right, and I, the three of them. It was Kira, Tally, and Erica. Yeah. Erica and Kira showed up. Yeah. With yeah. like, was it your cousin? No, that would be my stepdad's sister. And somehow, fuck you, Carl. <laughs> you heard it from Nate. I got Fuck no beef, you. girl. I got no beef. Yeah, you no. know what? I heard the conviction in Nate's voice. You don't sound like a great person. <laughs> Fuck you. Let's just say they, they, they even had a code word for whether or not this was going to work out for them or not. Wow. Whoa. And we found this out later. <laughs> but you specifically remember the code word being said as they're getting the hell out of there. Something that, well, no, they didn't even leave. They went out to dinner with us and everything. Yeah. Wow. It was weird. At least yeah. they let you finish, you know? Well, <laughs> Well, I mean, they liked oh, me. Well. <laughs> they liked me, but they wow. didn't like Nate, uh, Nate or other band member. They were like, oh, Brandon's a cool guy. <laughs> I was just smoking the back in the day. you know. And actually, dude, that's when we did our our, 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 um, our DXS Cribs video. Yep. Where we're like, literally, we we did like our own handheld video of Cribs. Like, this is before. Disney. It was like parodying it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 we had like the basement area where I was at. Now, you had like a letter from Kira tacked up onto the wall um cute yeah it was so cute and then like <laughs> we ended up going outside where like jason like face planted himself on purpose into the pool full of snow yep and then you went out and showed your dad's fiero yep <laughs> <laughs> that is such a parody like you got the house you got the bathroom the kitchen the fridge and then the cars oh, oh dude the bathroom's coming because <laughs> uh, because after because uh, you were sitting in the car, you're like, yeah, most, yeah, most people have the uh, have the I can't remember how you said it the the stick version, but this, this is, is a manual thing. or something. <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah, like you meant to say automatic. Yeah. Like, so then we, <laughs> nice try. So then we went back upstairs where like we went to your room where the magic happens, where you humped on the bed. <laughs> And then we're like, hey, have you seen Jason? I'm like, I don't know. Is he in the bathroom? We open the door, and there he – when we planned this, by the way. He's sitting on the on the toilet with his guitar. <laughs> and, and we're like, what are you doing? He's like, playing my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guitar. Well, we're going to go out – well, we're going to go downstairs. I'll join you in a sec. <laughs> we just, he really went to the bathroom, by the way. This is like <laughs> – he took the we also one take this right oh absolutely and like we didn't know the power of editing i was just like you film well, everything at well, once we were taking Jesus, media right? in high school yeah and we sort of edited this whole thing together jason had it or had it i don't know if he still does but uh i if i ever see him again i'm gonna ask him if he still has that because i want to see that and then be totally embarrassed yeah <laughs> because then it ended with you taking jason's shoes because it was snowy outside right and he we were outside and he decided to run up and hump. It's something with you and humping in this phase in your life. You were one of you were the fans. schmuck. <laughs> exactly. I was just that was my shtick. It's quite the journey. He he ran up <laughs> and tried to hump Jason's car like oh. like right on the trunk, but he he slipped and fell and busted his ass. <laughs> and then the last thing you hear is him going oh, and you hear hey, you took my shoes, you dick. <laughs> 
And we all just start busting up laughing. Oh, man. That's been forever ago. Gosh. I really want to see this video now. Was right. That, that was winter 2004? Yeah. Before YouTube? Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Winter of Oh, wow. Yeah. That was right before YouTube. Uh, yeah. Nick, um, what's 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 some of the crazy shit that's happened in the Doom room? Like, in the basement there? Like, what are some of our antics that we've done? Blue Man. Uh, Blue, <laughs> Blue Man. Man. We used to have a guy come out in a uh, in some blue tights. And he would wear a blue mask, and he would just get the crowd going. And I'm talking, he had, like, blue gloves. He was shirtless. He had to be shirtless. Um, And he would just get the crowd pumped up. And then eventually, um, we introduced his arch nemesis, Red Man. (laughs) 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 I mean, pretty much the exact same thing, except Red. I love it. Let's see. Uh, We got the the good old rum gun. We filled up the the squirt gun, uh, the super soaker with... Sometimes rum, but you know, usually whatever the hell we can find that's alcoholic. Remember that one time at fifth quarter where you guys not only brought the rum gun, but you brought the rum pistols. I sure do. I remember. I think I've told. I've, I've yep. probably told this story. When on. I came in clutch, it was like crap. We forgot the rum gun. It's like <laughs> I live in Indy. I'll help you. Cool. Well, I think I've told this story on the metalcast, but I'll tell it again. Whatever. Colby was so excited to have one, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "I'm gonna get you, Dick. I'm gonna get you." <laughs> And he finally, it, the time came, and he shot it at me, and it went right into my eye. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, never again, Colby. There, it was there, awesome. There was the time I put moonshine oh, man, in the that gun. Was, that was fun. That was at, uh, <laughs> that was at uh, Tim Gunn's house. Where yes. The cops eventually came and told us at the first Doom Room, like, no more. Like, if you do this again, we're going to start giving you tickets. So we only had one other show planned after that. We moved it to another guy's house. It was a crazy awesome show. Lots of awesome yeah, bands on I it. I remember that show. That was the first time I crowd surfed in a basement. That's like, cool. I was able to get up get up top. <laughs> we, we never could have crowd surfed in our basement. <laughs> We'd be hitting our head on the beam every time. Oh, oh. And like, then without walking through it. I'm sorry, but like it, it was so low like me and Tony had to literally like like really duck to that damn thing. That reminds me of the the bars. You guys remember those? Like the things you can hang on. Yeah. Like what the hell was that about? It looked like a <laughs> like a sex dungeon was down there. <laughs> so like right right in the crowd, there was across one of the floorboards, there were just these little rings, like maybe ten of them that you could swing around on. It was like a jungle gym down there. It was Whoa. wild. You might have sex <laughs> yes, dungeon. Yes, I, I miss Some those weird things. Yeah. I miss those rings. I used to do pull ups on those. <laughs> Dude, my Get favorite rum gun story. Get swole. Uh, when we played, what was it? I think it was the Ursa Minor CD release party at that like church. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. we brought the rum gun and said it was filled with Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> because it was an all ages show. What it, we, we had alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did. Know. We lied. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. But that was my favorite. Dude, it that, was, that, that show was okay. Because that show was weird because we stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing that sucked about that show was, and no, nothing against Ursa Minor or their fans, I guess, was, but the thing about that, you brought two different crowds together. You got the Weed B crowd, which is the metal crowd, and then you got Ursa Minor and all the bands that were there to support Ursa Minor, the hardcore crowd. Yeah, and it hardcore. it's a very different scene. Like, the bands in the hardcore scene they tend to not, you know, watch any of the show. They tend to just be outside vaping the whole time. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't, as much as I agree with the sentiment, I don't think the the correlation between hardcore and vape had existed quite yet. Not yet, it but it was, it was budding. But it, it was, was budding. one of those things where we started to play, and, I mean, there were a hundred people there. Yeah, and the moment the we started lot. playing, see ya. Seventy percent of the people just walked out. Our first show back when we reformed Draxus back in the day, we were at a uh, we, we were at a benefit show. Uh, I don't remember exactly what Natalie it was. Natalie Lyons. Yeah. Was that was, was, was that the Lions show? Yeah, Natalie Lyons, May uh, 9th of two thousand and nine. Yeah, date and all. But nice. he has a set list on his wall. I bet. Or is it still on the Draxus wall? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So. It was our first show back. We've been practicing. Uh, we've been practicing for quite a few months, right? And so, uh, like, we were we, we were really gunning to be ready to come back. So here it is. All right. We're in front of people. There's a decent crowd there. And uh, we're still, I, I think we were, like, maybe 
second or third third up on the on there the, were six bands we were like right in the middle right in the middle so it's like it's almost kind of like where you want to be it's like right when people are really flooding into you, you have your early risers who are there and you have your people who are there kind of maybe to see like the later bands um but like that so they're coming in and literally we got on stage played one or two songs and everybody left Ooh. and at first we were like dude were we that bad no some fight happened outside Aww. everybody went outside to see it and then the ambulance came and the cops yeah because somebody got his skull busted open Ooh. he like oh, hit the shit. concrete and that was a big ordeal because it like, started with the previous band which was weird because we were at this gymnasium type place and everybody was playing on the stage but this band was like no we're just gonna play on the floor right next to everybody and it was just like okay so they were playing, and a mosh broke out, and then there was some arguing. By the time their set finished up, the argument had turned into a full-blown fight outside that everybody just rushed to. And it pretty much, like, it didn't really end the show, but it, like, the, us and the band after us really suffered from that. So. Well, because, uh, well, then, like, the last band that was there, um, they, they pretty much played to the people who just came to see them. Uh, so, I mean, we... we it really was unfortunate. And as I said, scary at first because we thought it was us. Like, we thought, like, wow, this is a yeah. mistake. What the heck? This is really disheartening. Well, we had a 47-year-old drummer at that point. We did. I mean, so. and... Uh, so it wasn't Schmuck Nate that fucked that one up. No. 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 <laughs> Nate, Nate was a little older, a little wiser then, you know? Starting uh, to work on it. Yeah. You know what's really weird? I just saw all those pictures from that show just the other day at Dad's. Yeah, he had them. He's like, hey, check these out. Look what I found. That's cool. Because that's where Tony dressed up with the hat and the black rose. Tony, Tony's the, he, he was actually at the, the, the Lafayette Theater show with me. He is Cowboy. Quite, yeah, he was the dude with the cowboy hat. Okay. He is a complete character. He is, I could tell. <laughs> he's an awesome guy, complete character. He has done every kind of music you could probably think of besides polka. Wow. Like he's he, missing out. When we first met him, he was a, he was a self-proclaimed Satanist in the black metal. And and ended uh, in like death metal, and then at some point he got really big into punk. He he got me into power metal, and that's where like, you know, uh, we've discussed here on, on on the show before you guys, of course, on other episodes. My journey, like once I hit like power metal, Iron Maiden, Ice Earth, Man of War, like, Dragon Force, Dragon. Okay, yeah. Well, little, oh yeah, uh, Dragon, Force. Dragon Force. <laughs> but I mean, I just there's I just pff, soak it up, soak it up. I love that cheesy ass power metal, and uh, so. He he got me to that. He then he was into like this weird. What do you want to call it? Like folk ish. It was right. It was right when he came back from the from his stint in the military. Yeah, it was like Irish folk music. It was Irish folk, like like flogging Molly. Um, well, he does like flogging Molly, but it was like Irish. Folk. Uh, what's the folk. what's the not movie? metal? Just what's straight Irish folk. Crap. What is the movie? Uh, was he of Nick? No, no, no. Uh, G- Juno, mm-hmm. yeah, basically the soundtrack of Juno. He loved that. Oh, I know. So he got really it's a good into soundtrack. That. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but then okay, so Sporky. he's made he's made punk music. He's been on actually uh, he's actually been on a punk record with uh, some guy named Truant. Mm-hmm. He, he's done guitars for that. He he's done he's done, he's, he's made music with us and more of a you know traditional alt metal. Uh, electronic dubstep. He's done electronic dubstep. He's done video game s type music. He's rap done rap. He's done country. Wow. Like, wow, getting he's around. Been, he's so multifaceted. Is that he's pretty good at all of it. Mm-hmm. But the dude just kind of like he's like an evolving wheel. It's like you don't really. He was a clown for a while. Clown Tony. Of course it's a real he thing. was. Yeah. <laughs> We're still talking about the cowboy, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. What <laughs> kind of clown? Uh, so Jungle. now we're talking about him. Mr. Mr. Gamgee. <laughs> he I think was his name. He dressed up as a full clown and would go out to bars that way. All right, we're done with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Are you afraid of clowns? No, I have no qualm with clowns. Okay. He has a qualm with juggalos. Oh. 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 Like almost Hitler level qualm. Whoa. Like, oh Hitler, <laughs> Hit, Whoa. like Hitler versus the Jews. Is I, that a Dongo deep dark secret? <laughs> no, it is not a secret. I'll, I'll proclaim it anytime it comes up. You just talked about wanting to gas a, an entire group of people. Oh, I can go into more explicit detail than that if you want. <laughs> I, just, I, I just read I typically do. Where uh, I guess at, at, at a gathering, Coolio was performing yeah. and he went to crowd surf and they weren't ready for it so nobody caught him. He just laid it on the ground and they started beating him up because they were ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> and they took his shoes. <laughs> That's okay. Coolio hasn't done anything since Keenan and Kel, so. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's that's well, what you get. That's your karma for is. performing at a at a gathering of the juggalos. That's, that's your karma. Amazing. He learned the hard way. <laughs> See, I think a juggalo in my mind goes to the workaholics episode, straight up juggaho, which yeah. makes me love juggalos because it's hilarious and makes fun of them in such a clever way. To be fair, Tony is a cowboy now, and he has he has been a recovered juggalo cowboy. <laughs> he's 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 reco- Okay, first of all, does he have a hatchet man tattoo anywhere? No, no. Okay, no. so he's he just he just has the jiv. He doesn't he hasn't gotten full blown jades. Okay, <laughs> you right know on. the terminology. Oh, I invented the terminology. <laughs> me and me and my friend Alan Dawson. I remember those conversations. <laughs> we got J I V H J I V. The H is silent. It's just jiv. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Human juggalo immunovirus. Yeah. <laughs> that's that, that's just when okay, and that's 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 a very broad term, because it, it's a very broad uh, syndrome, I guess, or disease, virus, whatever. Yeah. So like, you can get it from like sleeping with a juggalo, juggalette. You can get it from <laughs> ha- being friends with one. You can get it from just listening to ICP in general. <laughs> so that- we all technically have it, unfortunately, but it doesn't progress to full blown jades until you get a hatchet man tattoo. It's not dire. That's what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, it's not dire. We I have, mean, it's it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. Oh, JIC, bro. Oh, I'm going to do my best to try to get you to sleep with a juggalette, <laughs> but I'm going to try to get her to hide it until, until after. afterwards. And then she just goes and like shows you the tat, <laughs> and you're just like, no. no. <laughs> the problem is you need to make sure it's like, and I don't know how you'll gauge this, good luck, but it's got to be like the best sex he's ever had. Because then he'll well, be like, the thing I is, fucked up over it, you know? I'm I'll not going to get myself jaded over it. You know? <laughs> I'll admit I don't take the it, joke like, that far. Give it to it, myself. It's really hard to not already have Jiv, because, I mean, at some point we have listened to it. At some point we have been friends with a juggalo. Sin is a fat bitch. I mean. Yeah. Well, see, the thing yeah. about... <laughs> That was that was a totally different parallel. I wasn't expecting, but okay. It's one of their songs. Have you heard it? No, I've heard it. Oh, <laughs> I've heard it. Yeah, Jason introduced me to that, and we just cracked up in the car. I think Jiggle Homies is the only Jiggle. song. I know. <laughs> Did you say Jiggle? What Jiggle? <laughs> I see now. I just envisioned David Lee Roth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's awesome. Uh, I want to talk about these guys' shirts. Your shirt, hey. too, kind of. Oh, okay. Did you just see these guys? Yes, I did. Thoughts? Oh, yes. Iron Maiden, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Ghost opened for him. Only saw one song by Ghost. Total disappointment. Uh, Maiden played... Wait, 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 hold on. Was it a disappointment in them, or was it a disappointment that you missed the set? Oh, uh, I wasn't very clear. Uh, it was first a disappointment that I missed the set, but once I heard the one song, I just was... The vocalist did not do the job. This is the new Papa, and he's not... Very good, right? He they just, just replaced it, it him. Didn't even sound no, like himself. No, no, no. It's the same guy. I'm pretty sure he is the only yeah. member yeah. still. Everybody else got kicked He's out. He's the sole writer. Weird. He is the sole writer of everything. Mm. But let's not waste our time talking about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, Maiden, Maiden was, was oh. phenomenal. It was one of those shows that you told yourself, like, if I don't go see him this time, I may never get to see them. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if they aren't as good because... You still got to see Maiden. Yeah, yeah I wish totally. I went to that. Not the case. They were as good as they've ever been. They, Bruce Dickinson is still the, one of the greatest vocalists alive. He's, you know, they were they ran around the stage the whole time and they traded guitar solos back and mm-hmm. forth like, like I've never seen live. It was a great show. Best you know, show I've seen this year probably. You know, I, I I went to that show for a lot of the same reasons you just mentioned. Like you don't you don't know if they're gonna do it again. And you know. I've I've recently got into them over the last couple years, mainly for a band that you booked called uh, Boner Joe Six, right? Uh, yeah, I think Boner Joe Six is the one who popularized. Yeah, the Trooper, yeah. the, the and Trooper, then, and Two Minutes to Midnight. I think you yeah. guys play, they they played that right. And then uh, yeah, then Iron Maiden tried to take credit for it. Yeah, <laughs> really. Sucked. Yeah, it, it, it. So like, I really got into those those songs, and I was like, oh man, I know Maiden does a cover of these. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> I feel like we needed to go deeper here. This is like some yeah. sort of inception. Shit. So many <laughs> bands have covered Boner Joe Six or yeah, Boner dude, Jovi. Crazy. Did you hear about Steve Steve? Yeah, Steve Steve. Yeah, dude, he got put into rehab. Yeah, but, they never uh, replaced him. I don't word think. On, word on the street, like he's he's making an appearance. Oh, right. I think he's I think Ooh. he's getting out. Wow. Steve is, Steve is he hopping back on that red rocket, touring around the world? It must be. Uh, the red rocket that is Boner Jovi. <laughs> Radio Flyer. 
Yeah, that's a that's a, a darker part of my journey. <laughs> <laughs> the the boner Jovi. But uh, have you been a long time Maiden fan though? Yeah. Okay. I cool. I think they were one of those bands that I got into, not be, not directly because of Guitar Hero, but when I, I, that really got me into everything. Like I think Megadeth was on the second one, so I got into Megadeth, which got me into Metallica, and somewhere along the line. Got introduced to Maiden and Power Slave, man. That's my favorite Power album of all yes. time. It's just all right, um, so good. I had listened to Maiden before. Didn't click with me yet. Vice City had Two Minutes to Midnight on it. Two Minutes to Midnight is just it, fucking awesome. The, the, Vice City opened my eyes also to Megadeth, because Beast Cells is on there. Anthrax. Okay. Madhouse. Slayer. Rain and Blood. You know, Priest. Quiet Riot. Yeah, Quiet Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, Quiet Right has like two songs, and like one of those songs is a cover. Yeah, in fact, they also have another cover that was never quite as big. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, uh, Vice City got me into Maiden, and then uh, I saw Maiden in 2012, and uh, they were doing their Seventh Son of a Seventh Son revisited tour, where like they played a lot of songs from that record. But they played like a lot of other other big hits. Like they didn't play anything from the more mo- like I want to say they played a few after Seventh Son, uh, uh, some songs after that came out. After that, maybe not many. I think I looked up the set list. They uh, probably played Fear of the Dark. They did. Yeah. Um, but every single so good. <laughs> every single song that they did, that like the big ones, they had like a like they had like their like their banners. So for like the Trooper, they had the cover of the Trooper covered in ice. Like it's from Seven Son of a Seven Oh, Son. wow. So it was That's really cool. neat. I just really got into that. But Iron Maiden is totally the best band I've ever seen live, period. Yeah, ever. They, they were phenomenal. Ever. I mean, and I've seen quite a few. Uh, not as many as, as, as most. But as far as like sheer, like, they're, uh, like when you count in their age, when you count in, like, sometimes you see a band and they have a really great live presence. And you go, that was a good show. They didn't really sound too much like, uh, like their album. But that doesn't matter. They put on a good show. Then you see bands that are like, they sounded perfect, CD perfect. In fact, they could have been just miming up there. But they were just really lifeless on stage. Maiden does both. That's so funny that you said that. Because, to tangent, the first time and the only time I've ever seen Protest the Hero, super technical, oh, yeah. no stage presence. And that mm. was during their Kezia tour, mm. like right when super they early. first started. Yeah, And I just didn't after i saw them live i couldn't get into their music at all it was really weird like their live show turned me off from them really correct because they're way different now yeah, yeah i enjoy them more live than in than on cd oh, i can't yeah. get into I've them on cd them live three times when is when is fortress celebrating its 10 years because man i want to see ready for that i want to see that that yeah. is i had a friend introduce me to i think it was Bone Marrow was the first song Bone I heard, was, and I listened to it, and I was like, oh my god, Bone what the, was the hell first is song this? I heard, but it wasn't until Sequoia Throne, until I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then I heard uh, Blindfold Decide, and that's still one of my favorite songs by Protest. Um, but yeah, like, man, when was that? Jeez, oh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I moved to Texas briefly uh, when I was in high school, and I had this uh, this one friend who was older than I was, introduced me to all these different bands, like, all at the same time. So it was, like, I think that, I think he also introduced me to Dream Theater. Protest was one of them. Winter Sun was yeah. one of them. Yeah. Uh, Symphony New X. New album coming. Yeah, I know. I'm ready for that. Symphony X. Yeah. I fucking love Symphony X. But, but yeah, like, Protest, I think, like, resonated with me the most. Just how, like, stupid crazy it was. Because I'd also mm-hmm. been a, a, fan of, uh, a fan of Steve Vai stuff. Because I oh, really yeah. like Steve Vai. And that's, you know, the crazy guitar stuff, but it's also, like, really intricate at the same time. Mm-hmm. And Protest kind of does the same thing and then kind of pushes it to a crazier level. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've seen them three times. Um, twice in Chicago at the, what is it, the Bottom Lounge, I think? That's where I'm getting ready to go see Between the Barrett and Me yes. on their 10 Years yep. Color Tour. And then, cool. yeah, and so then most recently I saw them in Seattle at El, El Corazon and... Yeah, they they are they're great live. Uh, Roadie Walker, I think, is hilarious on stage. So, but like during Kazaya, like that tour, I imagine you know they're still a new band at that yeah, point. Yeah, they so. weren't really like there was no banter. It was it was one of the weirdest shows I've ever been to in the metal world because it was booked, in my opinion, very poorly. Sanctity opened. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Sanctity. Mm-mm. 
they were around for a short time, and then their bass player, Jared McEachern, just became the bass player for Machine Head. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but he was their lead singer, and he quit, and then now he does that. But So Sanctity opened, and they were awesome, and then The Sword played. Okay. And that was right off of their first album, and they were boring as shit. They literally looked down the whole time and just played their instruments, and there was, like, nothing. The music was really good. That's so disappointing. It was, yeah. The Sword sounds like, so energetic. Yeah. But then, like, Protest the Hero got on stage, and there was a lot of dancing, but he didn't say shit to the crowd. Huh. I was like, man. Oh, yeah, we couldn't. Recognize that we're here. We couldn't get the fucking singer to shut up when I saw him. (laughs) Yeah, so, I mean, it it, it, it must have just been an evolution of that band, which is good to know that, I I mean, I didn't hate Kezia when I first heard it, so maybe I'll go back and check him out. Yeah, dude, do it. Um, and then Trivium headlined that show. Oh, nice! And that was during, wow. that was the week after uh, Crusade came out, like a week to the day. Yeah, that had to have been. That sounds like a great lineup. Yeah. It, it it was a great lineup. Uh, you know, like I said, the only thing that was disappointing was the middle two bands just had no life. They, they played great, no life, and mm. that was the, like Sanctity came out, and they were the newest band, booked first. Mm-hmm. And they just fucking slayed. Because they like, had something to prove. Exactly. Exactly. And then, like, the sword came out, and I knew it was going to be super technical, and it was. And it was an experience. But then, again, no talking. It's just like, this one's the next song. Okay. And then they would just, like, go into it, you know? That's so weird. And then, of course, seeing Trivium live was like, uh, that was the first time I saw them, and it was. Mind blow. <laughs> they uh, closed with Pull Harder. And I watched this dude. I watched this dude crowd surf, and I was like, "Yeah, crowd surf, bro," because I was up on the balcony level. And this dude's crowd surfing, and the crowd disappeared, and he went head first backwards onto the concrete and <gasps> folded like a fucking wallet. Ooh. And I was like, "That dude's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking dead." I just watched a dude die. Like that's what happened. So I see him before Paul Harder's over. He jumps up and he runs back towards the front of the stage and is just going at it. And I saw him after the show, and I was like. You fell on your fucking head. Are you okay? And he's like, "Fine, man. It happens all the time. No big deal." I'm just like, <laughs> you bent your back the wrong way, friend. He did. Like, I'm, I'm talking like Kay. he went. That way. <laughs> just, cool. All right, man. Matt Heffy, he's been he's been his YouTube channel's been pretty active lately. He's been doing a lot of uh, acoustic covers, weird acoustic covers. I might add. He did um, he did "Damn It" by Blink One Eighty Two. He did "If I Could Turn Back Time" by Cher. <laughs> Quick little right factoid. The second song I ever performed live was Damn It by Blink-182. Oh. In a sophomore... It wasn't like a talent show. It was like a... Uh, so I went to McCutcheon, and we were the Mavericks. So it was the Mr. Mav contest. Oh, yeah. They did that at Jeff, too. So we had, a, Jeff, we had so. a band together, and we did, we did Damn It. I forgot, the, I forgot half the lyrics halfway through it. <laughs> um, and... Uh, Still ended up getting third. It was it was pretty all right. Sick, the first song I ever performed live was uh, oh no, I'm gonna admit it right now. Uh, the first <laughs> song I ever did in the fourth grade. <laughs> the words escaped. He's like, no, 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 bring it oh, back. I, I don't want to tell him. Uh, the, the very was first song I ever did live it was no. Creed, wasn't it? <laughs> all star. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, Bringing back the Astro Lounge. So, so it was. Uh, what was that? So it was All Star by Smash Mouth. The second time was uh, Doesn't Remind Me by Audio Slave. That's a little better. And then, and then, Damn It was the third time. But, whoo, Smash Mouth. You remember when we tried to? <laughs> this book one goes out to Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when we tried to book the auditorium for our high school? Yeah. You remember what they told us? I don't actually. He said. What? We can't let you guys perform because we open it up for you. We're gonna have to open it up for everybody. We're the only band. I'm pretty sure. Literally, we were like, like we were one of like two bands playing actively at the time in our area. One was a really, really heavier band with older guys. They wouldn't have been able to book there. We were all like seniors, so we're like, dude, this would be cool. We'll just, you know, bring a lot of the senior class and we'll play for them, you know. And they didn't want to book us. And then later on that year, they tried to book a Christian rock band, and they had to cancel it because of lack of sales. Yep. Damn. You know, like, should have had us open. Oh, bitches. yeah. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I think I probably said, like, should have prayed harder. It just, <laughs> you know. Change God your, just change didn't your profile. Will it. Change your profile banner. Yeah. Like that, your, your frame or whatever. The temporary frames. Just send some positive vibes. 
Did you see the one I posted the other day? It's like, Gondor needs your help. And it's like, send Gondor our thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yeah. Change his profile, man. <laughs> I was like, yes. This is so, so modern Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Oh, it's a fucking wasteland. No, what I you barely use it. You, you said his shirt, my shirt. My oh, shirt. I just... We, we tangented into, into the protest. Shirt, yeah, yeah. No, his shirt. it's just like we've been kind of... It didn't naturally tangent into mine. I just said, well, you, like, what do you guys say about my shirt? <laughs> uh, I was just going to remark how I finally got to listen to all of Incorruptible. Yes. And it's maybe the best metal album I've heard in the past, like, three to five years. Mm-hmm. It's pretty damn good. I mean, like, it, it, especially from these guys. I mean, I, I really felt like... I've said it before. Uh, we, we reviewed the album a little bit because I sent you some of it, and you listened to most of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, of Incorruptible. I really feel like it's 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 on par with not the last one, but the one before they did, uh, with, with, with Dystopia. Dystopia, which that really just kicked my balls down my throat, you know? Uh it, 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 they went up and then back down. <laughs> wow, that's a kick. Uh, this album doesn't quite do that, but I feel like it. Like where the last album wasn't quite the follow up that one deserved, this one is. But I also feel like it's really cool because it, part of the paramental part of them, they like to do these big concept album stories and stuff. And this album doesn't do that at all. It just sort of like this is a song, this is a song, this is a song, this is a song. It's a big collection of songs. Where, like, you know, the, the one they did before this was Plagues. The first six songs is kind of like a twenty one twelve type thing. That's all a story, and the rest of them are all unrelated. You know, it, it's kind of uh-huh. difficult to get into that just a little bit. I thought it was still good, but not great. Yeah, I those, thought. like, those like really long concept albums that are just like, yeah, here's a story. It's, like, cool. Like, for my, for my experience is, is Dream Theater's yes. The Astonishing. Yeah. And I went and saw that live. And it was cool. It was great. It was, it was fun. But I don't know. I'm just like, can we, can we get some of the older stuff? Like, <laughs> right. Sprinkle it in. <laughs> Sprinkle well, it you in. know, it's like I went and saw Symphony X, and I've seen them twice now. Okay. And, of course, they uh, they like to do the big uh, concept stuff where mm-hmm. the full album. Or, yeah, like uh, the Odyssey. Or the, uh, the Odyssey. Yeah. We were all chanting for the Odyssey, and they didn't play it. We were all pretty upset about that. That's um, all that's a long song. <laughs> it is a long song, but it's epic as shit. I mean, I, I, I mean, the intro, the first four minutes sounds like an intro to like a Disney movie. Yeah, the bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <Do-do-do>. yeah. <laughs> um, Just finish it out, guys. <laughs> All right, well, 24 um, minutes. Yeah, already go. started. <laughs> My favorite concept album probably definitely had to be the Parallax from Bar- Between the Barry to Me. Mm. Like, you got, you got the hypersleep dialogues, and then you got Parallax 2, uh, what was it? Was just Parallax Two, or no? It was Future Sequence. Yeah. And then, then on top of those two, like one of them's a three-song EP, which is a half hour long, and then right. you got the full-length album, which is how long, Nick? It's just under seventy, I think. Just under seventy right minutes. At Sixty-nine. Yeah. On top of 80. those two, you have random songs throughout their discography that are also be, that took place before these that are also part of the story. And it, it's, oh, it's such a cool story. Ice Earth does that a lot with the Something yeah. Wicked story. Like, they did an album called Something Wicked This Way Comes. With the last three songs, the trilogy, that's a story. Mm-hmm. And then uh, later on, they actually did a double album where they took that trilogy, made two albums out of it. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then they did Dystopia, where the first song and the last song are part of that story. Then the Plagues of Babylon, the first six songs, which is like a zombie apocalypse, are considered in that story as well. And so far, in the new one, there's no... Even though he's on the cover, he's become like their Eddie. Okay. Uh, in fact, they actually did a, an EP called The Reckoning, uh, where uh, their mascot is holding up the uh, Don't Tread on Me flag with, the, with like the Union mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, outfit. So it's like the... It would be like that version of like the Trooper. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Was, That's um, cool. But so, Coheed, they're, they're a band that... I was getting ready. They were yeah. who They're I was a band that like up. not... It, Okay, so does all of their music involve encompass like one besides the latest? Yeah, their latest album, uh, which what the fuck is that called? I have it. It's got the house on the cover. That's all I know. Yeah, everything that they've ever done besides the latest one is all. It's all the same characters, it. right? It's the, it's same, the Armory it's exa- Wars. There it is, the yeah. Armory Wars. Yeah, and uh, so it's like from cool. Second so Stage cool. Turbine Blade through. Uh, no tomorrow. No world for tomorrow. And no world for tomorrow is like the first big chunk of the story, and then Year of the Black Rainbow is the prequel to everything. To the sequel, and then the sequel <laughs> sequel is Ascension and Descension, <laughs> and then after that they just released that most. And recent they've one. got 
graphic novels and yeah, stuff. Like they yeah. by by is it Dark Horse? Yeah. I think that's the name. Uh yeah, I like met it's Claudio, a like it's a legit story. I actually met Claudio at C two E two a couple years ago when he was promoting that's one of his comics. Really cool. Man. And uh I do spray paint art. Like I do like stenciling and stuff and it's like that's awesome. Yeah, um, and I made a Coheed logo like on uh, canvas, and I gave it to him. I was like, "Dude, fucking have that!" Dude, that is awesome. Speaking of graphic novels, Iced Earth, not Iced Earth, Iron Maiden's coming out with a graphic novel or like a comic and book. a video really? game. Whoa, yeah. the game's the already out. Oh, the game's already out. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah, like apparently, I just read where Iron Maiden is coming out with a comic book, and it is going to be based off the video game, where, oh, cool. where Eddie fights through the different worlds of the album covers that have been created from that so, wow. so nice. we could be seeing a power slave issue yes. oh my god that's incredible true story i uh <laughs> shared a stage with the first singer of iron maiden we did Whoa. paul Diano. what oh did, what, what, what we, did, we, <laughs> oh, oh, we were there the week before but i actually was on that stage <laughs> oh, the so night were, of okay, because so yeah because paul Diano played at this place called the uh, where the fuck was it it was down in uh Tilton. Tilton, yeah. Well, no, Radmakers. Yeah, it, it was Radmakers down in. Uh, it, it, was that Tilton or, or, or is Tilton? Tilton is, is, is just past Danville. Not Tilton. It was. Uh, it's just past Champaign. Tolono. Tolono. Yeah. So, Paul Diano, first lead singer of Maiden, was doing a show there, and there was some band. God, I can't think of their name. Starts with an S. That's all I got. But uh, they were like, "We're gonna do one more song." We're going to do Master of Puppets. And I was like, you're not fucking doing Master of Puppets. And they're like, if anybody wants to come up and sing, feel free. And I was like, fuck you. I'll sing. And I went up <laughs> on stage and did the whole song. People thought I was in the fucking band. They're like, that was the coolest shit ever. How, how long did you guys practice that? And I was like, I've never, never. met these guys. <laughs> I don't even know who the fuck these dudes are. And then Paul Diano took the stage and literally made excuses the whole set. Just like back in the day. He's like, oh, I accidentally smoked too much, and now my throat hurts, so it's not going to sound that fucking good. Breath child. <laughs> 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 Breath child. Yep. <laughs> and he, I mean, he's not that really that great of a vocalist anyway. Well, and then he got busted for having an illegal visa. Well, oh, damn. Well, well, didn't he also, he was also supposed to be on unemployment, but he was traveling to the U.S. to do shows. Correct. So, yeah. Nice try. So, did, so <laughs> all he did were just like the songs from the first two Maiden records? And shittily at that, like mm. he closed with Iron Maiden, and it was not. I was I was yeah. really happy that Iron Maiden played Iron Maiden. That's, See, that's my, one that up. Yeah. That they played almost every single song that I knew from them, which is not very many. So like I was very happy to hear everything except Run to the Hills. The thing that ruled about them was even the songs that you didn't oh, recognize. Yes. Every single song kicked, kicked ass. ass. Like they, yes. they ruled every single song. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I recognize this one. It doesn't fucking matter. Well, it's now still I fucking reckon. awesome. And they still L- kill it. Listening through this, listening through what I've managed to purchase since the show, uh, I, I recognize some songs. Like I, I recognize Where Eagles Dare. I recognize, I recognize. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. Power Slave. By the way, <laughs> Power Slave and Somewhere in Time. Holy shit! Get into. Uh, uh, Peace of mind. I was just. That's I was what I have. That's the. Too. That's the other CD like, I have. Is, isn't Where Eagles Dare? Yeah, that's yeah, the first song. Yeah, and Fly to Icarus is okay. on that. Yes, and the Trooper. <laughs> do you so remember good. when I wanted to do an acoustic version? Yeah, of a Fly to Icarus. Uh-huh. When we were doing our acoustic show, and we never did it. No. And then we played Memories that one time, or Nightmare that one time, really cool, and we could never figure out how we did it that I one know. time. <laughs> I know. That's see that uh, that's what happens sometimes is that when you start playing songs and you play them over and over again, you just start playing them differently on purpose to find uh-huh. different, different ways to play them. Yep. yep. And uh, actually, I just recently heard that uh, that that is something that really was contested with Metallica back when they went to their therapy stage. Uh, Saint Anger. <laughs> Saint Anger. Yeah. The nineties. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, like, okay, so so Lars would get bored. So he would start drumming stuff differently, and that would piss off James. James oh, like yeah. James is like, that's not how you played it. And he goes, oh, that's how I played it now. And James is like, no, that's not how we, we played this song 60,000 times. <laughs> We're going to play it the same. And he's like, well, I just kind of feel make like it, I Make that. it a group effort, at least. You know, Don't just right. be like, I'm going to do it. Well, I, I recently <laughs> read uh, that, that, was it, that James is, uh, was like, that's something that they have had to work on, on their relationship, is to just let him be Lars. Because we played it this many times. I want it to be that way. But he wants to do it that way, so then they all just, all right, let's just start messing around with it. 
that was me and Tony butting heads in the band a lot because he would do stupid shit on the bass, like play a funk bass line <laughs> to fucking <laughs> Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I'm like, no, you don't fuck up Nirvana like that, man. And he'd be like, boom, <laughs> boom, you know, boom, boom. I, and I'm like, Speaking of this, sorry. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Um, last Saturday at the field day, I noticed, okay, this was a kind of a return show for your old drummer, Cody. Not right. not like a permanent, uh, I don't think. It was our five year anniversary. Yeah, it was your five year anniversary so, show. So awesome. obviously, you bring back Cody, the almost original drummer. And he's the only person that ever played with us live. We okay. had an original okay. drummer that that wrote stuff. Yeah, but he we never played live with him. And Cody came on two weeks before. He's like, Be- being, well, I'm not gonna play these songs like that, but yeah. I'll play them. That's just so my, myself <laughs> being someone who's been there pretty much since the very beginning. I know, and and I've witnessed you guys evolve over a very long time, five years, and I noticed Cody was playing some of the songs differently. Yeah, but I mean, it was oh, yeah. cool. It was cool. It yeah, was, it was I, fresh. I mean, yeah, I mean, I always try. His, his I mean, he's definitely too. improved. He's definitely improved. Point since. out that that's something that we're very good at, and that specifically Corey and Tex, the guitarists, they're constantly saying like, so we started out playing this harmonized part, and then it's like, all right, well now that we've got that down. I'm going to try to do something cooler and just kind of stick with it. And we've been very good about, you know, that's good. Allowing one another to, to change the stuff. Cause I mean, it does get boring, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. had to have gotten boring for Lars. Like, dude, I'm sick of playing this shit the exact same way. Like, just yeah. let me, let me fuck that's with it a so little bit. That's so stock, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from Lars Ulrich. Yeah, well, that, that was his, that's his quote though. <laughs> if, if you watch the, some kind of stock monster, dude. fucking drums. He's all pissed <laughs> that's, off. That's, that's just so fucking stock, dude. I saw uh, somebody on YouTube took the James slamming the door and multiplied it by like 64 million times. So it's like one slam and it's like 10 slams and 20 slams and a million slams. It's like, so it ends up being like this weird, like really robotic, like sound. <laughs> someone should use that, that slam and replace Lars's snare on St. Andrew. <laughs> so someone's probably done it, but Oh yeah. my God. It's like, get if back they, to that. Like, uh, Colby, I dare you. I, I challenge you. Oh, okay. Do it. Well, anyway, but like, you know, it's, it's one thing if you're just playing the same song over and over again live, but like, I think it's cooler if you want to like spice it up live because yeah. then it draws people, your people to your shows mm-hmm. and then be like, Oh, I've seen this band 10 times, but they always do something different every time. So it's cool. And besides, you're likely to have the recordings, and then you can listen to it how it was the yeah. exact same as much as you want. So, right. Yes. Well, okay, same band Metallica. Remember in the late 90s where they were doing, like, they would do bring out the acoustic guitar to do, like, Unforgiven or Low Man's Lyric or something like that, when they would rarely play that song. But then, like, out of the blue, they would just start playing acoustic Four Horsemen. Wow. Yeah. Slow down. Dang, 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 dang. Yep, I remember that. And it's just like really just weird and vibey, but they just messed with it. It's like I find it ironic that because James did that, it's okay. But since uh, Lars yeah. did it, it's, it's not Lars, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that goes to say like he is not shy about saying he's very controlling. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's something that he's had to try and give up. You know, it's like they they, they have that. That's one reason why they didn't break up is because they had to go through that therapy. <laughs> And figure out how to work with each other. Band therapy. Yeah, band therapy. Like, I care about you there's fellas a, enough. There's a documentary on it, man. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. I saw that. In, me, and, me and this guy saw that in theaters. Yeah, wow. I've actually seen every minute of footage from that that uh, documentary because I have the DVD and have watched every mm-hmm. fucking special feature, including <laughs> audio commentary, the whole night. Oh, man. Searching I need for, to go through and watch all that stuff. I did. for donuts, banana, banana, banana. banana. <laughs> I did watch the uh, the... the uh, some kind of monster revisited yeah. because oh, once, once they put everything on Netflix, yeah, I watched that and I love I love the summary they gave out. I was like, oh, this is perfect. I mean, obviously it's ten years later or whatever, fifteen, however many fucking years Actually, later, thirteen years later, yeah, however many years later, thirteen, and like it, it, obviously they have plenty of time to come up with a good summary of the movie. But like uh, you see this therapist and he he slowly be fr- goes from someone who's trying to help them and then you eventually shift and you start looking at him as kind of a villain almost yeah yeah well i mean in their commentary His journey to they become end up, a villain <laughs> they end up <laughs> laughing about a lot of the stuff yeah. that's shown like a lot of the things that were like uh like they, like they struggled with or they showed like some conflict with the band they end up laughing about it like later on mm-hmm. you know of course they did that uh that commentary track probably uh maybe a, a whole year year and a half after the final thing was done 
when it was getting ready to go out on on DVD, it's them on the bus of the like tour bus sitting there watching it for probably only like a couple times, and them laughing about how the things that they said or things that they're showing, especially with the arguments between drunk James and and, <laughs> and, and then Lars. Yeah, and, you know, I, I got the Presidio stuff, you know. But. I would love to hear the Presidio tapes. They've still never released them. Well, there there is one song from that era that did get released in a different form. Lords of Summer? No, no. Lords of Summer was a song that they did before. Either they they wrote right before. Um, Death Magnetic? No. Lulu. You must be talking about the totally awesome tracks they did with Lou Reed. Oh yeah, <laughs> Lulu. Yeah. Um, Supposedly one of those tracks is actually good. <laughs> I think it's like the supposedly. final. Supposedly. Supposedly. I haven't heard it. We haven't found anybody to confirm. I, 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 I recently read an article. Not confirm nor deny. I recently read an article of the top 10 most underrated uh, Metallica songs, and that one of the songs off the Lulu album is on there. And I'm okay, like, so you just didn't read like the title of the article. Nope. You actually read it. I actually article. read it, yes. I don't believe him. <laughs> Not even but no, Lord I of, didn't look up Wikipedia. Lord of Summer was done <laughs> right before they were gearing up to do the last one, Hardwired. But the Presidio stuff, there's one song from the Presidio era that did get made into a song. It is, yeah, we did it again. Oh, yeah, with Ja Rule. Rule. Yeah. What? You've never heard nice. that shit, have you? What? Mm, no. It was Okay, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> this, this rap label called Swizz Beats was making a metal uh, and rap crossover type record. This was done while James was at rehab. <laughs> By the way, so this is just large. So he had no, he had no say in this. No, shit. none, zero. This <laughs> nice. was their, this was like Lars, a little bit of Kirk, and Bob Rock in a studio out, out in San Francisco. And Jar rolls in New York, and he, so they're like recording over like, he, they sent the thing over. He added some stuff to it, and it, it's literally not the best thing you ever heard in your life. This is Jar Rule when Jar Rule was still relevant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I mean, so there's that. I mean, there, there wasn't the complete decline yet, but. Uh, there wasn't even a decline with Charo. He just disappeared. I mean, that's well. <laughs> did did he? I disappear. Ooh, oh. I like how you did that. Metallica reference. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> puns. But that that song only ever saw release on that. I, I don't think Metallica. Okay. Has, I think you can. Get James that had. If, did, do you think they even told James? Like no, they did yeah, that. he knows about James it. Like, well, obviously it, right? he knows about it. But do you think like when he got back from rehab, he's like, they're like, hey, James, so. We we did a thing. <laughs> Sorry about all the hard work you just put in rehab. We're about to just fuck all, <laughs> all that up. <laughs> you're gonna hear this, and you're you're, you're gonna be mad. <laughs> and Lars is like, to be fair, it was stock, so we just <laughs> <laughs> all the vocals were done prior because um, it literally Ja Rule sings like the verses, and then James just does like part of the chorus. Ooh, more than the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Never more the whipping boy. God, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we did. He's on fire. <laughs> it is terrible, guys. Oh. It's, it's not. It, it's not good. No. But then, I mean, that could have been. But, then, but see, there's a guitar solo in it. There's 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 a guitar solo in it, and there's not, and there's actually snare. If I remember correctly. <laughs> wow, it's a little bit more Metallica than Saint Anger. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like. It's kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place. I think St. Anger was necessary for that band. It was. Because even though it's not... Um, it's not the worst album they put out, and that's my, that's my opinion. I still think Reloaded or Reload is actually like a far in, inferior record because it was just them patching work on some songs. Sure, you have a couple of big hits on there, sure. But then after that, it's just it's all stock. <laughs> it's all generic. It's, it is. They just kind of patch some stuff up and put it out. At least on St. Anger, there's an actual direction where they like, okay, they had a few songs and they decided this is where they're going to go. Like it or not, that's where they went. So as an actual album, I feel like it's a it's a better release because I'm, I just feel like in Reload, it's like, all right, let's just wander around and put out some songs. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. We're getting ready to play Detroit next week, next Wednesday. Talica? I'm going to see that. Orion oh, Fest. you're going? Yep. It's not a Ryan Fest. I don't think they're doing that anymore. No. Really? Man. Yeah, no, they're just Very still on their nice. tour. Oh, uh, yes. I wanted to go to Chicago, but tickets were a little oh, bit too expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. T- overly so expensive for blo- like nosebleed. Well, like, did you mm-hmm. uh, did you see that like the band they had opened up was just a local band? Yeah. Is it like one dude in like guitar, vocals, and a 
extra. I saw I, someone from around here. I saw on Snapchat. Um, they're like, yeah, excited for this band. I can't remember what they're called, but I can tell you who it is that opened for them in Chicago because it's something that most other Chicago musicians are extremely pissed who was at. It? They had a contest yeah. for a local band to open for Metallica, right? And local it, band should mean someone who hasn't been given a chance. The band that opened for them is not a local band. They're nationally touring act, Local H. Yes, yep. okay, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, was, it was like complete and utter bullshit. You damn. Know? But that's, I mean, that's the sticks. That's the music industry. That's the thing about Metallica is they always find a fresh new way to piss you off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but was it Metallica? Who knows? Oh, it, was, it, it probably wasn't Metallica. It was yeah. probably whoever put the show on. But, you know, I mean... Still, fuck Metallica. No, I'm kidding. I like Metallica. I mean, Q Prime Management is they've they've had a way of pissing off their Metallica fans for a long time. So. Well, that's like the whole cease and desist thing with the tribute act for Metallica. They used Metallica's logo on their flyer, and Metallica sent them a cease and desist. But it wasn't Metallica; it was Q uh, Q, Q Management. Prime. And then didn't like James have to? And like... James is like, fuck that, fuck them. Do what you're gonna do. And if I'm not mistaken, they. Played songs with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So they went and they were like, not only do we not give a fuck if you play our songs, but we'll fucking hop on with you and play some songs. And then another example is uh, there was a Metallica tribute act out of Portland. And they they had all their equipment stolen. And Metallica replaced it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, oh yeah, that's a drop in the bucket for Uh, us. Oh, by the way, you can just have like our legit gear. Like we'll buy it. And send it to you. Right. Shit. And then there was also another legal uh, legality thing with a band called Metallica. Yeah. They, they they mix Metallica songs and Beatles songs. And Sony Music Corp owns the Beatles catalog, or at least a large portion of it. Uh, the, I know Michael Jackson owned quite a bit of it, but mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of that has gone back to Sony. But Sony, uh, Metallica got to a certain point when they put out a record, an actual record, not just a free online EP or anything like that. So when that got released, then Sony's like, eh, eh, going to flex our legal muscle here. You guys can't do this, yada, yada, yada. And then Lars got his lawyer team involved, and they met in court with the Sony lawyers over this. And then due to Lars's, uh, Lars's uh, interjection, interjecting himself in the matter, they are, they are now legality free. They have no problems. And they just played big shots with O'Killy Do Killy oh, nice. a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, they're actually touring now? Oh yeah, dude. They dude, played te- that's te- uh, that shit's terrible. They played Big Shots in Valpo and then they played the Brower House in Lombard. That uh, that Oakley Dokley shit. I was excited for it and I got tagged by like fifteen people <laughs> in the same fucking video. You know what it. you know what I wanna say about it? When it's, it's more about the image and less about the music you're putting out. Yeah. I can't I can't subscribe. I agree. Mushroom head? <laughs> Let's not talk about Slip mushroom. Not light. <laughs> Let's not talk about Mushroom Head. I, I, Mushroom Head was one of the first big metal bands I got into, and I, I don't have my, a very high opinion of them right now. But I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. And, and, and an even better example would be Guar. What did Guar do? Uh, image over. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Quality of music. <clears throat> or, uh, but they have fun with it. That's the thing. Okay, sure, yeah. I'm and and the fans fucking Lordy love had it. fun with they Image, fucking, and they also okay, uh, they you fucking had fun. You're emulating Lars back there. I know. <laughs> Do you guys know Lordy? I know you know I know Lordy. Lordy. Yeah. Yeah. Hard Rock have ever, Hallelujah. Have, have the devil ever, is a loser, and he's you, my bitch. Have you ever seen Lordy? No. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm good. They, they lip sync half their stuff. I'll, I'm, that's, I'm, I'll be all right. It's really disappointing. Because it was weird. We saw, I saw him. Uh, what? Ozfest. It was Ozfest. Yes, it was. Yeah. And the thing was, like, their vocals were just spot on. And I'm like, they're wearing masks. And <laughs> I've sang in a mask before, and it changes how you sing. You shouldn't sound dead on to the fucking album. And I was like, oh. Unless you're playing it straight from, from the, the album. album. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, so I think the music was real, but I think the vocal tracks were fed in. Some bands do that. Um, get, what's the fucking point? I I mean I agree, but uh, I I want to say I have heard that even down there at, at like at Klipsch, uh, down in Noblesville, I can't remember who was down there, but they were saying that they were just feeding in the vocals and they, I can't remember who it was now. Darn man. Well, I'm gonna pull it away while you think about that. You just said that at the field day event, which I was following on Facebook, <laughs> you had the Weed Beef five year anniversary show. Yep. 
Did you join them on stage for anything? I did. Yeah. Fucking cool. I was there the whole time. <laughs> oh, you, so you guys played like a full yeah. OG style show. How was it? It was great. Yeah. Was Just awesome. like you never left. More or less. We didn't have a, a bassist. One... Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but so, so Colby played with our other two guitarists. We played with three guitarists. And yeah, it just it went great. Yeah. Awesome. So why don't we talk about Field Day a little bit because that because that event just happened uh, like now I guess it'd be about like a week or so ago or mm-hmm. uh, by yeah. the time this comes out a couple uh, days ago last Saturday. Uh, but by the time this comes out, by the time the people are, are hearing this on day one, July first. Yeah, That's back when it in happened. July first, it was like your big kind of like Fourth of July gathering. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, get together. I, you know, I know that. Uh, that uh, that Doctor Dongo took a lot of pictures and, and some. I took a few and, and some videos. I took like four. Dressed up like the <laughs> Ultimate Warrior. Oh man, that was so fun. <laughs> it was hard to take pictures because literally from two in the afternoon until three in the morning, it was nonstop. We did um, like uh, uh, I wanted to say like field day kind of events: cornhole, mm-hmm. ladder ball. There was a slip and slide, flippy cup, dodgeball. Uh, we did. All those kinds of games. There's a big tournament for the first part of the day until about six o'clock, and then we had a band who does power metal, Zephaniah. Uh, we had them play, and while they played, we had people LARPing. So they were playing outside I underneath our tree, and people were just whooping each other's asses while they played. Awesome. I still have a bruise <laughs> on my. I have a bruise on my leg from that. Still, he's showing had, us. Had my part of the show gone smoother i, I would have reinvoked the larp but alas <laughs> oh man bring it back <laughs> I, but I, yeah it was... i left i left my swords there i don't know what happened to them oh they haven't appeared except parts of the hilt <laughs> yeah the, the, hilt par- the, the parts of parts of the hilt of my master sword just didn't make it it's a very prominent hilt the master sword <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was the second time we've done like a big you know all day field day fourth of july thing we've been we've been doing the fourth of july shows for about four years now i i've been recently looking at my memories on my, my on this day on facebook the time hop essentially uh and i so I, i've seen the evolution of it i mean it i would kind of it, okay it didn't start as a show but remember the nick and dick fourth of july extravaganza absolutely <laughs> i sure do i remember all the i, I remember i saw in my on this day me talking about how hungover i was like, yes the day after because of this. and you know this year this year went a, i think it went a ton smoother than it did last year because we we started with the events rather than having the events during the music yeah last year we did everything at the same time i remember you're trying I would, to do the events while yeah. music's being played and it was just i remember okay because i was on your i was on your field day team last year and you were like come on let's do this i'm like nick i want to watch the band play <laughs> okay well go do that we messed up <laughs> but I mean, you learn yeah i mean you know the whole thing's a learning experience you know every year it's gonna get better uh, you know bigger and better oh yeah you know so we definitely my, learned a couple things this year that are gonna make next year even better one of my favorites that i always say is the first step to success is failure mm-hmm. yeah. you gotta learn what's fucking wrong before you can know what's right and yeah. luckily this was a uh, a very mild form of failure i would say the first year was the first year was wild it was yeah, like it's was, it was like nick what are we doing i'm like I let go of the reins two hours ago, guys. You need to just you just need to do what you need to do because this isn't gonna happen. <laughs> this year was better. It'll be better again. That's not our only big event. Like you, you guys played the Laffy Con. That's another big one we do. We always make Halloween big, and uh, so we we have experience doing the bigger shows. But when you try to throw in five or six hours of playing games, it makes it a little more difficult. I don't know how or well. Should, team b fisters did on all the other events but i know we definitely dominated dodgeball we were kings of dodgeball man yeah. <laughs> well i know we we got like second place in the flipadelphia right yeah we killed we killed the flipadelphia and then who won that uh i the whole thing the 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 who slip and slide one i don't remember but they won by one yeah they second beat us one, by one fucking second, second. It I did much sad. better than that than I thought I would. I was really worried. I'm like, I'm going to let the team down. I know I am. <laughs> Turns out it was just Austin. Mr. 40% over here. <laughs> yeah. He provided approximately 40%. <laughs> Mr. 40% provided us with an article uh, earlier today that he didn't read, mm-hmm. but I read it. No, I did not. Read the headline. It's good enough. All right. Dave was saying, <laughs> I'm trying to hold the phone away from here because it's getting that really, like, static. static. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm going to try go on airplane mode to see if that helps. Eh, it's not too better here. So, Dave Mustaine says, Make it that's Grammy. Should have been given to him, not the band. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so So he did not read it. You read it. <laughs> I read it. He didn't say it just like that. I think he said he would like, like, he wants to win a Grammy that his name is on. He wants, in the future, to have something that is totally credited to him. But it was just, it was this week that they came out with the other article that said that there's like no group creativity going on where like if if the other guitarist has a riff send it to management like and they don't actually like maybe if i'm maybe if i'm misreading it but it doesn't sound like they even do a whole lot of the creative process together it sounds like how slipknot recorded all hope is lost or all hope is gone because mm-hmm. they didn't mm-hmm. talk to each other at all during that everybody just sent their shit in independently and then they like formed an album and that was pretty much what i couldn't imagine working like that yeah no. right All right, so basically the article reads as, reads as such. Megadeth won its first Grammy this year in the Best Metal Performance category after being nominated for the award 12 times uh, in its career, though not just in that category. While it's something to be extremely proud of, frontman Dave Mustaine said in an interview with the Columbus Dispatch, so random, uh, feels that he should have been, like he should have been given the award and not the band. Crazy as I am, I was thinking about the Grammys the other day and how it was given to Megadeth. I was thinking that surely it would be a lot better if it was given to Dave Mustaine, not Megadeth. I guess you've got to keep the fire burning. To Dave's credit, he did write the song Dystopia that won the award, but at the same time, the award is defined as the one that meant to honor artistic achievement, technical proficiency, and overall excellence in the recording industry without regard to album sales or chart position. So whether Dave wrote the song or not, the rest of the band still played the, on, on the track and probably deserves a good portion of the, of the recognition as well, right? Well... Uh, oh, and Dave's not uh, mad about not being in the Rock and Hall of Fame, too. Quote, basically, I'm in there with the Metallica thing. That was basically just <laughs> just a diss those guys pulled. But it would be nice <laughs> to be there on my own two feet. I'm sure it'll happen at some point. You, you can't create a whole freaking music style and not be recognized for it. So basically, Dave Mustaine invented metal. <laughs> wow. Um, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Hats off to Dave Mustaine. Oh, thank you, out. Dave Mustaine, for th- this 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 journey into comics episode of Metalcast is brought to you by Dave, Dave Mustaine. Mustaine. <laughs> <laughs> now, so the, the second episode of Metalcast, we kind of dogged on Megadeth quite a bit because that's when they were doing their uh, their uh, crowdfunding, their yeah. crowdfunding for their Dystopia record, which they started with their record label and then they went to the fans to help finish it. They had outrageous like. Five thousand uh, dollar tiers for getting like a video chat with Dave Mustaine on guitar, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> three hundred dollars got. I, I remember this one, three hundred dollars or something got you like a like a camera with pictures on it, like a disposable camera. Cool. That they took in the studio and, and behind the scenes, but there was thanks for your dick pics, Dave. Yeah, but there was like no guarantee <laughs> of who was going to be taking the pictures or what, or what the pictures were going to even be. Of. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. Oh, man. I just and for only remember, $100, you can lick Dave's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was like a 10,000 one or like where you got to be in the studio with Dave. It's funny because uh, who's the lead, or lead I'm sorry, the, the lead guitarist of Megadeth? His name's Kiko Lur- He's from Angra, right? Yeah. Okay, so like for like a thousand bucks, uh, I'm just going to throw this number out there. I don't remember. He's like, okay, you get uh, you know, a private lesson with, you know, with Kiko. You know, and then then it's like five thousand dollars private lesson with Dave. So Dave is that high, much higher on the tier than K- like Kiko will give you a lesson in person or on Skype for a thousand. Multiply that by five, and that's how much Dave is worth. Whoa! Wow! Yikes! Just straight up, I'm worth five times more than you are, my friend. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's just so weird. I mean, I mean, I guess if these guys are in the band that makes some money, cool. I mean, everyone, every every musician is going to chart their own way. I know, like, Megadeth is very notorious for band member changes throughout its career, as some other bands are out there. Um, I, death. <laughs> but Death yeah. was a little better than Megadeth. <laughs> Ice Earth has had, like, five singers at this point. Shit. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's just a matter of, like, when you look up the definition of the word humble in the, in the, in the dictionary... <laughs> <laughs> Does it just say not Dave Mustaine? <laughs> not, Dave. Yeah. not Dave. Well, I mean, because uh, I remember he's like, well, you know, I was in Metallica, charted that, and then when I was forming Megadeth, you know, like kind of sort of spawned Slayer, and that sort of spawned this. It's like, so he created thrash metal. 
<laughs> Dave by himself just created that. Now, don't be humble. Antonym, Dave Mustaine. <laughs> <laughs> And the, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say that he didn't have a part in it. Come on, of course he did. Oh, yeah. A massive part of thrash metal. But when you're thinking about, like, like just one guy is like, this is my hat, curator of thrash metal. I like my own Grammy and my own wing in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> An additional building off to the side, yeah, specifically so dedicated to Dave Mustaine <laughs> and his legacy. The journey of Dave Mustaine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Dave Mustaine is like the 80s version of Ted Nugent. He just went fucking <laughs> off his rocker, you know? Yeah. So just, you're saying that Ted Nugent didn't go there until like the 90s or late, or like early 2000s? That, that's when he went off the rocker? Yeah, and it's like, he, but he was like a musician mainly in the 70s and like got his fame in like the 70s and like now 80s Dave is, is crazy Nugent now. Did you ever see the Seth MacFarlane short with Ted Nugent killing a ghost? No. It's a ghost in Ted Nugent's house. He's like, "Boo, I'm a ghost." Ted Nugent grabs his gun, boom, kills him, and then he's cutting him up on the like on the table, <laughs> <laughs> cutting up fresh ghost meat. <laughs> oh my god! Typical Ted. Typical <laughs> Uncle Ted. <laughs> oh, and there are people that have stickers that say Ted Nugent for president. Hasn't he shifted his views? Just when you think views? that there couldn't be a scarier option. Correct. Hasn't he shifted his views on shit, though? He was, like, full-on Trump supporter, and then out of nowhere. He shifted his views a little bit because some Republican senators got shot at, but that's, <laughs> that's about it. And then he's like, hey, don't shoot at people. Guns aren't the, necessarily the best option. People that I actually like were shot at, and therefore now <laughs> we need to talk about We need to talk about better gun control. But yeah, didn't, like, Nuge and Kid Rock, they went to the White House recently? Yep. Gross. <laughs> Super gross. Uh, it's about as American as it could get. What was Trump, thing? Kid Rock, and yeah. fucking Ted Nugent? So I think like, Sarah Palin was there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was such a, that's such a like an oddball pairing. I thought we got her out of there. Uh, <laughs> hashtag room of fucking crazy. That's what that was. <laughs> and the thing, like the thing is, is that Kid Rock, despite his political views, seems like a really cool, laid back dude. Yeah, you know, it's like, like what, like. For all of his shows that he does, he, he, he lowers the beer prices down. Oh, yeah. You oh. know? And it's like, he, he wants his people to have fun at his show. He right? wants them to get drunk so I don't remember how bad he is live. <laughs> <laughs> did, like, does he still play Ball with the Ball? Probably. Does he? Yeah. I know he does country or type music now. Well, like, oh, yeah. Well, like, basically, he's the reincarnation of Bob Seger. Really? You think like that? I wouldn't give him that much credit. <laughs> I mean, he did. He does. He did come out and specifically make a point to say that he does everything he can to have lower ticket costs because he just wants people to come and enjoy it. Well, that's good. So I mean, where where Guns and Roses and Metallica are selling one hundred fifty two hundred dollar tickets, he's yeah, like yeah. thirty bucks. You know, that's gonna get twenty thirty thousand people out to watch me. So I'm looking up set list from Kid Rock to see what like what he's currently. Oh, kind of <laughs> I mean, I I've actually never been to a Kid Rock show. Ne- you started a new band, right? Yes. Is this fake news? Are we supposed to leak this news? Um, I'll say what I can say. Okay, yeah. I'll say what best. I can say. There's uh, so we've we've got an- another band. This is the fourth band I'm in now. <laughs> this one's called Huge. That's all caps with an exclamation mark, and it talks about um, about the forty. What is it? Fifth. 46th president 45, yeah. of the of the United States. Um, I'm not going to say that the songs paint him in a you know particularly good light, but all the songs are somewhere between 30 seconds to a minute and a half. Locust. And, and they just, you know, rail on them pretty hard. And uh, we, we go out there with the full America outfits, you know, really, really representing. I love the uh, Russian hookers. I'm sorry that it got leaked. I know you're probably not really thrilled about that, but um, you guys oh. were riding on horseback, and it was just it was majestic. <laughs> yes. Okay. At one time. Now I know that you guys probably weren't really happy that it got leaked, but I want to say that it really has a nice like death clocky sound <laughs> to it. Like for real, that was the first thing in my head is like fucking death clock. The other like, day, the other day I was talking to him. Well, it was field day. I, I will come up to Nick. I'm like, dude. Those vocals, like I've I've been waiting to hear vocals like that from you for years. And he's like, yeah, yeah that's my death yeah. clock voice. <laughs> yeah. Nathan Explosion's a huge influence on the huge, uh, huge sound. Yeah, 
I like Nathan Explosion quite a bit. So we've got our, we've got ourselves, I think, ten songs written that are about fifteen minutes worth of material. <laughs> Hell yeah, awesome! Stormtroopers uh, of death material right there. It it's good stuff. It, we we've evolved. The initial idea was just one riffers, thirty seconds, and then we, you know, it's like, well, what if we transition into this other riff? It's like, guys. Now, <laughs> now we're venturing. We're, 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 up we're, near, we're up near a minute now. We're, we're venturing into <laughs> real songwriting, guys. Yeah, we like, got to keep. Let's this, calm down. Keep down. I, I consider it like Susian writing, you know, where he was, <laughs> where he was like, "I'm going to write this book, and I'm going to use this many words. Here we go." And our thing was one riff, thirty seconds, whole album. Here we go. We're trying to be maybe a little more musically inclined than that, but the whole point is to just uh, talk shit about. About uh, Mr. President. So. so I did look up the set list for Kid Rock. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. Now, I will say that this sort of surprises me in some aspects. In other aspects, not so. Uh, this was a show on January 27th, 2017 at the Cactaw, or no, I'm sorry, Choctaw Grand Theater in Durant, Oklahoma. It's right in the heartland of the country. Hey! Quiet down back there. <laughs> We're trying to talk about Kid Rock for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Set list starts off with First Kiss. Anybody here heard that song? Nope. Nope. Same here. I thought it was funny that you said we're talking about Kid Rock and the dog ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the fuck out of here. I do not want to be part of this. Okay. Uh, so Hot. I I have heard So Hot. I, nope. That's, that's a... Uh, and then You Never Met a Motherfucker Yeah, I know like that one. Me, that's slash, off Kaki. Slash American Badass. Okay, so we got Cocky and... Cocky. American mm-hmm. Badass wasn't on Cocky. Mary, uh, no, 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 I'm just saying he's uh, super cocky. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fair. Uh, chickens in the Pen. What? Somebody's Gotta Feel This. I know that one. Yeah, same here. Um, Tennessee Mountaintop. Yeah, no. Cocky. Yeah. All Summer Long. Ugh. Kid Rock, a.k.a. DJ Bobby Shazam. <laughs> DJ Bobby Shazam? How much, how much of his material from Stone Pimp in the Morning do you think is on there? What the fuck is Stone Pimp Early in the morning, morning Stone Pimp. Early Morning Stone Pimp, that sorry. Was the, that, that was the album before uh, Devil Without a Cause. Yeah, gotcha. that was early uh, Kid Rock. Gotcha. I don't see anything on here uh, from that era. I only know No, that. No uh, Devil Without a Cause. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. Uh, cat scratch fever. What? Uh, yeah, we're getting really meta here. Rock and roll Jesus. Only God knows why. Okay, good one. Born free. Uh, ba with the ba. He this still is the does encore. It. Preceded by picture snippet. So he sings picture snippet, yeah. like a, a, a little bit a of little picture. Because yeah. then... they couldn't afford Cheryl Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy. And then closing it off as a cover of the Spencer Davis group, Give Me Some Lovin'. Okay. He really is kind of all over the place. But he still is playing the three big hits from from Devil That a Cause. Um, so, I mean, that's what brought it to the dance, really. So, And I, I guarantee you there's people who go there just to see that. True. Uh, even to this day. But, I mean, it, a lot of that was like it's so much stuff either A, I haven't heard, or B, it's like the, he is gone – Complete Southern rock country. Off the rails. Well, and, and okay, here's the thing, is that he, he did grow up on that shit, just like I grew up with that shit, right? I mean, it's like, how would it be if I became a big guy in, like, a band, like a metal, like, guy? Okay, and then 10 years later, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do an album that I want to do. And then people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I grew up with this shit. Yeah. You know? And, man, it, like, this is Roots. This is where my love for music began. So it's like I get it. I don't necessarily, but as a as an outside perspective, I I can definitely say that I don't I don't really dig it. But would it really be in him to to go back to that what he was doing back in the late nineties? You know, I don't know. Uh, do you think that at some point he's going to become adult rock? He's been Kid Rock for so long. When does he grow the fuck up? <laughs> adult Rock. He can't just call himself Rock. There's already I thought you were the making rock. some sort of joke with Alt Rock. <laughs> no. So like A-D, A-L-T, Rock? Adult Rock? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, what? Is this some sort of like weird, punny, meta joke that I'm really just not understanding? No, just when is he going to grow up? 
Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, fuck up, Kid Rock. Never. I wonder how old his kid is now. Grand Kid Rock, <laughs> little little Kid Rock, <laughs> Junior uh, Rock. Ooh, I like that Junior Rock. Man, I I still remember like, you know, and we've talked about this before for me, but Kid Rock, that Devil's Had a Cause record, is a very important milestone in my journey into yeah. Me. You know, uh, that was almost the, the, like, like the spark because from there I went into other rap rock, Limp Biscuit, you know, and stuff like that. And then I found Metallica differently uh, through another venue. But because it, it, it wasn't until later, till I got into Metallica, that I realized, and I thought he ripped off Metallica with bad, like American Badass. I'm like, the son of a bitch. I'm like, am I the only one that noticed this? And I'm like reading everything, and then he thanks him in the liner notes. I'm like, oh. Okay, just just you know, making sure, making sure. You know, I was gonna have to call in the boys. I, if, it, well, if it wasn't, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, if it wasn't for cocky, that that, that, that some of those riffs are kind of they got some heavy riffs on there. If if that, they got some heavier guitar, I guess for what age I was at the time. But if it wasn't for cocky, I guess and uh, Creed, I wouldn't have had this love for heavy guitars for heavy. I guess riffs, and then that that that's what propelled me down metal. As much as one can make fun of you for listening to Creed, I love Mark, Creed. Mark, I still love Creed. Mark Tremonti is fucking incredible. Amazing. He's my favorite guitarist, hands down. Do you remember when we were looking at Creed songs, like or like not even like to really cover, but like you know how you and Mason always had like those Guitar World magazines, yeah. Right? And then uh, you'd always look at Creed songs, and you're like, "What tuning is this in?" Open like it's usually open like open D, G, open D, C. Yeah. He he played in weird tunings. Yeah, after a while, he still does. Yeah, uh, I mean, even in Alter Bridge, he was in weird tunings. And then when he went on to do Tremonti, Tremonti, he does traditional tunings. He does mostly like drop C and stuff. Ah, gotcha. Wolfgang still doing the Tremonti stuff? I think so. That's cool. No idea. To talk on defending Metallica, do you remember when we were all very pissed off because Jay Z was releasing a CD called The, the Black, Black Album? <laughs> and we were like, no, Never. there's only one The Fucking aren't, Black Album, and Metallica put it. Aren't out. all of Jay Z's album Black Albums? Oh, oh my. Wow. <laughs> wow. We went there. That might actually get edited Glad out. Oh, wow. The first edited out thing for JIC. I don't know. It's just an observation. <laughs> There's no connotation to it whatsoever. Oh, I know. It's just. <laughs> Damn. Holy shit, Dongo. <laughs> Got back just in time. <laughs> oh, I think shit. that's my cue to leave. <laughs> yeah. How long has this been going here? It's, it's damn near 8 o'clock. 51, yeah, so. I think it's about time we need to kind of wrap this up a little bit. Yeah, we didn't do what we planned to do, but that just means we get to save it for... Oh, yeah, for well, sure. Well, actually... Unless uh, you want to speed round it. Well, I mean, I could just go down the list. Uh, I, I actually kind of forgot about it. I was having, like, a lot of fun. Oh, me too also as well. All right, so metal albums. I'm going to take... Okay, so can I, go, can I go ahead and, like, announce it? Like, what we're about to do? Go. All right, basically, okay, so last last metal cast, we uh, took a look back at 10 years ago in metal, the albums that came out. And uh, this year, or this this year, this this episode, we're going to take a look back at 20 years ago in metal. So whatever came out in the year of 1997. I'm, I'm going to take a guess, okay? I can't remember. This this album either came out in 96 or 97, but The Great Southern Trend Kill. Is that oh. 96 or 97? Well, Okay, what I have here is 97 in heavy metal music on Wikipedia, your favorite website, Dongo. <laughs> can you Facebook um, me that? Uh, sure. Just so by, I can have it. By all means. Well, no, I can't. Uh, okay, because don't worry I, about it. Apparently, cannot uh, you know work a modern technology device. That was very technical of you to call it a modern technology device. I don't know if it anybody was. calls it that. <laughs> Nobody, no. But all right, so. Uh, you don't fucking hear. You'll get it eventually. But, all right, so this is not going to be in any sort of, like, on the last time, there was actually in, like, from month to month order. Um, this one is actually going to be in alphabetical order, so it's really weird. Some of these bands aren't necessarily what you consider metal bands. but So this is heavy hey. metal music. No, keep going. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm just shit. looking at the article. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Dickinson had a solo album. Yeah, okay, so we have Aerosmith, Nine Lives. Love that album. Um Album? Album. Okay. Alice Cooper, A Fistful of Alice. Black Sabbath Reunion, which makes me wonder if that is a just a 
Like, cause I mean, I I, I know Sabbath got together for a tour around that time. You have Body Count, Violent Demise, Bruce Dickinson, Accident of Birth, Cold Chamber, Dark Tranquility. Yeah. And the next one, some, uh, uh, an album I actually know, Deftones Around the Fur. Like the only, it's the only Deftones album I know. Ooh, but. let's go, Dillinger Escape Plan. Oh yeah, self-titled album. Oh, I didn't know Gator. Dark. I didn't know Dark Tranquility went Falling back that far. Maybe. I knew Cold Chamber did. Then you have. Uh, I'm gonna totally botch that. Is that Demu Bojur? I think so. Uh, Enthroned Darkness Triumphant Dokken Dokken Shadow Life Dream Theater Falling into Infinity Ebony Tears The fuck is that? <laughs> Tor- Tortua Insomine Ed Guy Kingdom of Madness I like Ed Guy Electric Wizard Come My Phonetics <laughs> Dot 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 Emperor Anthems to the Welkin At Dusk Entombed To Ride Shoot straight and speak the truth. That's a long album title. Europe, the definitive collection. Faith No More, album of the year. Fate's Warning, Pleasant Shade of Grey, Freak Kitchen, Junk Tooth EP. You have Gamma Ray, Somewhere Out in Space. I like Gamma Ray, too. I'm a big power metal guy. You have God Flesh, Love and Hate in Dub, Grip Inc., Nemesis, Hammerfall, Glory to the Brave, Head P.E. Self-titled. Helmet Aftertaste. <laughs> I remember Helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Hypocrisy, the final chapter. Immortal Blizzard Beast. Incubus. Enjoy Incubus. And science. And science, Science yes. is underappreciated, if you ask me. Nate, you were once an Incubus, weren't you? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Seeing them in August. I really only know um, Make Yourself. I know like singles off other albums, but Make Yourself as a whole... I'm all about Incubus, man. Incubus is good. You have In Flames with Horacle. Ooh. Incantation, Tribute to the Goat. Jane's Addiction, Kettle Whistle. Judas Priest, Jugulator. That is with Tim Ripper Owens. Uh, I want to say that might have been the first one that they did with Ripper. Kiss, Carnival of Souls, The Final Sessions. Now, Nate. Yo. What year did you see Kiss? 2000. Okay, so it was way after this. Correct. It was on there farewell tour which was also <laughs> it was there it was there it was actually truthfully speaking it was their farewell because it was the last time the OG members of Kiss performed together with uh, makeup original lineup full blown hmm. and then Peter Chris and Ace Fraley left and they've never been back since right on <laughs> creator outcast Lip Biscuit three dollar bill y'all Ingve Malmsteen facing the animal. Machine Head, The More Things Change. Marilyn Manson, remake, Remix and Repent. Megadeth, Cryptic Writings. Ooh. Fuck yeah. Metallica, Reload. Reload. <laughs> Motley Crue, Generation Swine. I want to say this is the without Vince. Uh, Vince Neil. Yep. I don't remember the name of the guy that, that replaced him. You have Mudvayne. Oh, Mudvayne. Kill, Iota. That was and their... And that, that got re-released. That was their debut EP. That got re-released. I think so. Uh, as um, the beginning of All Things to End. Yeah. Which was... Yeah, that came, yeah, that came after End of All Things to Come? Or was that before End of All Things to Come? I don't fucking recall. <laughs> Nightwish, Angels Fall First. Mm-hmm. No Big Silence, 99. Orange Goblins, Frequencies from Planet 10. Overkill. Yes. That's an old school awesome yeah. trash band. Yeah. Uh, from the underground and, bl- and they're still going too. Uh, Pig Destroyer demo. Pig Destroyer, Pig Destroyer slash Orchids split EP. Primus the Brown album. <laughs> Queen's Reich, Here and the Now Frontier. Rammstein. Not even gonna try and say that. Zenzush. Um, you have <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Razor Decibels. Rhapsody of Fire, which I don't know if they were actually Rhapsody of Fire at this point. They were used to be called just Rhapsody. But okay. then, you remember the music listening app, yeah. Rhapsody? They sued, so then they had to put Rhapsody. It was the first mm-hmm. studio album by Rhapsody. Okay, so uh, Rollins Band, which are probably uh, Henry Rollins. Yeah. Uh, Come In and Burn. Rotting Christ. Dead Poem. Seven Dust Self-Titled. Shadows Fall. Somber's Eye to the Sky. Slaves on Dope. <laughs> A Good Turn <laughs> Deserves Another. Snot. That's an awesome metal name right there. <laughs> Get some uh, Sodom, or Sodom, however you want to say it. 
Till death do us unite. Soulfold. Is that how you're saying that? I think so. It's the the linear scaffold. Strapping young lad city. Shard of various visions. Strapping young lad. Wow, that was was that their first? Second. Second? Yep. You have Stradivarius, two of them, Visions, and the Past and the Now. One of my favorite records of all time, Symphony X, yes. Divine Wings of Tragedy. So good. Pharaoh? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The third and the mortal in this room streams EP, UDO or Udo. That's the, that, was that the lead singer of, of Accept? I'm going to look up that and tab that just for my own personal thing. Vader, Back to the Blind. Vital Remains, Forever underground and white snake restless heart and lastly wasp kfd so that was the year in heavy metal releases no great southern trend kill that's yeah that was 90 it had to have been 96 yeah. then that was a much shorter list than 2007 in and different I mean, era yeah yeah, different yeah. Era. i mean you're, i mean this is like right when new metal was starting to come in yeah. true and so, and I mean, me- according to this anymore. article, one of my favorite bands was formed this year. So. Newly formed bands, really. And which one was that? Uh, Lost Prophets. Oh, something mm-hmm. I tend to glaze over due to what happened. What happened with, with the their, yeah. Same yeah. with yeah. A, a band you got into a lot, Static X. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I love Static X. Let's see. Lost that, Prophets is probably like my hugest influence when it comes to actual oh, right music on. playing. But. What happened to them is a yeah, tragedy. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> it's hard for the rest of the band to recover from yeah. that. Like, they changed their name, right? Full blown. They uh, lost. Profits they started anymore? a new band called No uh, No Devotion with Jeff Rickley of Thursday. <laughs> no devotion to lost profits whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's different. It's kind of like new wavy, but like really dark at the same time. Huh. Would recommend. I'm trying to get this Udo. So. Uh, Udo Dirk Schneider. Okay, yeah, so he, yeah, Udo was the, that is the same uh, act as the, the original lead singer from Accept. He's the, he's the singer on Balls, Balls, balls to the Wall. Of the wall. Yeah. Okay. You got your balls to the wall, man. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was the year of metal that year. Of course, that was before I even got into metal. Of course, uh, what I, I, I did like, there's a lot of power metal stuff there. That's really what I'm into. And, uh, I have five albums on that list. You have five from twenty uh, from ninety seven. Nine Lives by Aerosmith. Uh, mm. da, 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 where'd he go? Uh, Megadeth, Cryptic Writings, Metallica, Reload, uh, Zenzushed by Rammstein, and did I miss one? Today, Junior. That's it. Oh no no. Where's uh the more things change, Machine Head. I got yeah. Deftones, Devin Townsend, uh, yeah. Mudvayne. Yeah. yeah, it's there's not much here for me. Shadows Fall. But I mean, it's interesting now, because, and like as we said, this is like a really uh, late '90s were a really weird, unique era because while the new metal was getting really high and popular, some of these other bands that would later go on into the mid 2000s, late 2000s to really solidify their style yeah. uh, were were kind of formed back then. And so, like, really early era stuff there. Like your Shadows Fall. And yeah. And the, the, again, with, like... Slipknot was going... Was starting around then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are Incubus' first two albums. Yeah. Surprised we didn't talk about reformed bands. The original Black Sabbath lineup was first reunited that year. I, I did look up that reunited album, and it is, like, a, a live set. Oh. Uh, like two disc compilation of like like a couple live shows that they did or something jane's like addiction that. reformed that year they also disbanded that year <laughs> 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 quickly remembered why they broke it apart oh. rat and suicidal tendencies nice Ooh, okay four that's cool yeah yeah man so uh, what what are some albums that have come out this year guys that like be it hard rock or heavy metal the band like albums from bands that you've known you've been a fan of for years like what are, what are some albums you guys have enjoyed Ooh, new um, albums strictly this year or yeah just strictly recently? this year Ooh, uh, maybe we'll stretch it to december <laughs> <laughs> i would just say the new iced earth it's the only thing i've heard yeah, that's man. new um, really. no no come on there was one more i will later down the line say the new um system of a down album when it's <laughs> out but 
Don't even. Bring yeah, it up. you're you're bring gonna, it up. you just jinxed it. It's done. It's not coming out for three more years. Well, man. or tool. Their bass player came out and said that they've had no progress writing in six months, but they did say that no matter what, it was coming out in 2017. So I think they're gonna push to that. I just. Uh, you said you kind of wanted to talk about them, but let's. Uh, we'll save it. it. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll uh, we'll save that for next time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No need to get crazy. Um. Some of my favorite albums that have come out this year. Uh, so far, uh, I love the new Rest Repose album. Uh, I don't know if you... I know Colby knows them. Uh, it's it, Jared Dines, YouTube sensation, whatever. And it's his <laughs> fucking band. Uh, and then... Um, what was the other one? I had another one in mind. <laughs> oh, shit. Only brought Oh, yeah, Stone Sour. More. Stone Sour came out with... Uh, their new album last Still week. Still haven't heard that. It's really good. It's a long album. It's I thought over. you were going to say the new Nickelback album. No, I, I haven't touched it yet. The new uh, Incubus album is actually pretty good. Too. Really? What yeah. about the new Rise Against? Is that any good? I forgot that was even a thing until literally like on the drive here. Okay. <laughs> I haven't heard. I heard a song and I, I liked it. Yeah. Um, Problem with Rise Against though is that they're, they're all their songs kind of yeah. sound the same. Yeah. Uh, another one uh, is the new uh, Phil Labonte solo album slash new All That Remains album. I enjoyed it. The the All That Remains ish songs are fucking All That Remains. Brutal. They're awesome. But the rest of the it. album, it's it's Phil Labonte, and you know it. And, but I I enjoy it. I don't enjoy Linkin Park's new album. What? You? Yeah, you. <laughs> you don't? I was going to say, you've, you've, from what I've understood, you've enjoyed all their other previous yeah, new this albums. One <laughs> is not. Like, Pre- Hunting Party was great. Like, I didn't like it. Really? I couldn't get into it. Really? Maybe you, maybe I'm just one of those asshole fans that Chester not even like Not even like about. Rebellion uh, that had... Uh, Him screaming? The No, the... <laughs> I don't know. One the of guitar them player from System of Down. I don't know. He was Taren? Yeah. He was featured on that. I song. couldn't. I couldn't get into it. Maybe. Maybe I'm just one of those fans that's just living in the past. Are you? Are you thinking of living things? Because maybe hunting There's... party is drastically different. It's like way closer. to No, that I'm stuff. thinking of the hunting party because I remember specifically you told me keys of to the kingdom. You specifically really told me, Dick, you need to listen to this. And I'm like, <laughs> you're like, yeah, it's 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 Lincoln Park. I'm but like, um, okay. Yeah, new album, not so much. The last Lincoln Park I listened to was the one that had Burning in the Sky. That was Living Things, yeah. Was it Living? They had the it had this. Um, wasn't it like something about sun? Wasn't that that album? Oh, a thousand suns. Oh yeah, that is burning in the sky. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of burn it down. Yeah, sun, that that was things. the newer yeah. off of Living Things. Yeah. yeah, I liked a thousand suns, but if you look at it kind of like from a different perspective, like don't treat it like a Linkin Park album. I guess you're right. But I think it's good music, but like. I don't know. I think they could have taken that and like put it under a different name and people wouldn't look down on it. Did you see the Linkin Park reacts to kids react to Linkin yes. Park? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. The you were such the a good sport about it. Did you see the kids reacting to Linkin Park reacting? Yeah, kids <laughs> they, they, reacting they to Linkin it. Park reacting to kids reacting to Linkin Park. Yeah. Is that next? Did they do yeah, it? Yeah, they no, did it. it's done. So they it did happens. it. And the, the kids are like listening to Mike Shinoda and they're like, Oh man, I feel like such an asshole for saying that, but he was so cool about Cause, it. Yeah, because Mike is oh. such a nice guy. Yeah. And then right when he's saying when he's doing that stuff, Chester comes out and just shit talks <laughs> yeah. every yeah. single yeah. fucking fan. It's like, dude, every you, you are talking about the people that don't like you, and you're one of those assholes that's saying like, if you don't like us, fuck off. Like, tight. I already didn't like you anymore, and you just make me dislike you more. Like, just shut the fuck up, Chester. And then, not not far, not not far behind. Here comes Corey Taylor to react to that, <laughs> oh, as geez. that's his job now. That's his yeah. that's his official Everyone's job title. Get Corey Taylor's opinion. On Every <laughs> his his official job title is react reactor react whore <laughs> to heavy metal media. He called Chad Kroger the KFC of of like hard rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also called him face like a foot. Yes, yes. <laughs> but like, like Chad Kroger was talking shit, like because Chad Kroger's like, name one band that's like as versatile as Nickelback. And the guy goes, <laughs> Stone Sour. Like, what have they done? And he kind of shit talks Stone Sour, and Corey's like, he's got a face like a foot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like I've been I've been voted sexiest guy multiple times and I wear a fucking mask. <laughs> and, and you got you got voted world or ugliest. most ugliest guy in hard rock not wearing a mask. <laughs> KFC of hard rock. Yes, he is the he is the rock and metal. 
what <laughs> KFC is to chicken. And then it's funny because the event where they were doing that, he was like, KFC is one of our sponsors. He goes, I'll eat it all day. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I won't. I might just have to go to KFC. <laughs> to, uh, to go back to Mike Kyoto for a minute, uh, I don't know if you guys know about the Jason Mike Chanel. Kyoto? The Mike, referee? Mike Shinoda. Mike Shinoda. <laughs> yeah, I fucked that up. <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. He, he's not going to hear Let's just this. call him Mike. <laughs> Mike, yes, Mike. So there's this thing called the Jason Ellis Show. It's on Sirius XM, and he was like on Faction Channel. And uh, we know people who do that show, uh, and they had Mike on. And they fucked with him because they brought their producer in, had him wearing headphones that would make it hard for him to hear himself talk. It like jumbles your words when you're trying to speak and you kind of like fumble over yourself. It kind of makes you sound a little like idiotic. And they didn't tell Mike that that was the play. They just said one of your special needs fans is here to meet you and went with the whole thing until the end. And they told him and he thought it was the funniest thing. They were like, oh my, he's like, oh my God, I thought there was something wrong with you. And you were saying all this stupid shit I couldn't understand. I was like, man, he's like the nicest guy, you know? Seems super cool. Yeah. Shit, man. Well, is that it, Brando? I do believe that is going to wrap us up. We are, we're pushing. How long was that? Two hours? Two hours, nine minutes. Thanks for the wrap up, Mike. <laughs> yeah? Do you want to do the taggies? Should I do the taggies? Oh, those tag things. Yeah. Hey, you know, I want to first off thank uh, all you guys for coming on the show here today to, to throw down on some metal talk. It's really a lot of fun to just take a break from the norm and talk about some music and have some good laughs. So uh, thank you all, guys. Thank Nick. Thanks. Um, yeah, Caleb is it Colby? Col- Colby. Colby. Wow, like the Caleb. cheese. Wow, you Never fucked up the it. name this time. Like wow. the cheese. <laughs> I have had a beer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Uh, it's been it, cool. It, it, thanks, uh, Mr. Dongo Richie. Of course. Of I'll be sharing PhD. the fuck out of your videos. By the way. Thank you. <laughs> OBGYN, Do- Doctor Dongo. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They uh, they decided it, not me. It it was just a natural thing. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming on and talking to us. Of course, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Of course, you can always find us on social media, on the Facebooks, on the Twitters, on the Instagrams. We're even on uh, on YouTube, kind of. Uh, I mean, LinkedIn, some, yeah. Tumblr, Blogspot, <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> No, we don't have my. No, we don't have any of those. I was thinking about it, and they're like Tumblr. I don't think you want me to have Tumblr. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen things on Tumblr that I can't unsee. So oh, that nice. is true. Yeah, that is really true. But like, yeah, you guys can check us out on all those. And guess what? Those all those links they're actually on on journeyintocomics.podbean.com. You can go check out that where you can check out all the old episodes that our RSS feed will not show you. All almost 150. I know, dude. It's crazy. Unreal. Was that January of fourteen? That you that yeah, that you started just rambling on about whatever you were talking about that Sounds day. like it's been quite the journey. Oh, oh man, it just keeps man. bringing it in there. I love it. That's the whole the whole shtick. Do you guys have a good like like last thing you say, like thanks for going on this journey with us? Or no. Something? No, actually Time uh, to add it fill in. your brain with shit though. That's gonna be the new one. <laughs> I had a guest on last episode, and uh, he was talking about, like, something to do with what medications do to kids, you know, like Adderall and and Ritalin and stuff, and he was like, you just got to go out there and learn stuff. You just need to fill your brain with shit, and I was like, oh, my God, Journey to Comics tag. Fill your brain with shit. Let's do it. You know? Brando? I'm here. Okay. Well, you just were, like, looking forlorn. I'm making sure you're all right. (laughs) He was just like... He just got so much shit in his head. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'll do the rap. If that's going to do it for this week of Journey into Comics, I'm Nate. I'm Brando. I'm Dick. I'm Nick. And I'm Colby. Thank you guys so much for listening. Fill your brains with shit.